All right, everybody out there. Uh, unfortunately for you, Corbett has made the cut today, which means any of amount of commentary you're going to get until he's done bowling is going to have to be by me so sorry i'll probably bore you to death but here we go we are in uh these guys here on five and six are we there yeah you kind of catch five and six to the left uh they're just finishing what would be game three so the scores scrolling across the bottom uh those are good through game 10 which would be uh the first two games of match play there's uh, a total of 24 bowlers that made the match play today. Cashed a total of 26. So there were 79 bowlers that bowled today. So an absolute amazing turnout today. Uh, thanks very much to Brent Prentice, the proprietor here, and his management and staff for hosting us. Uh, always a really good turnout at Cedarville. Uh, Cedarvale, everybody likes to bowl here. So uh, thanks much for having us. So again, top 24 have made the match play. Uh, at the end of qualifying, Will Matafee was your qualifying leader. He did get to uh, plus 131. There were only a total of six bowlers that actually made plus. Uh, this is a, a very demanding pattern, short, flat, tight, and tough. So, um, and the scores have shown it. Uh, in a little minute, I'll, uh, I'll share a stat that I find uh, probably the most impressive out of maybe any of the tournaments. I'd really have to go back and look at it, um, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, second was Chad Nelson at plus 107. Uh, Briley Howe came in at 36 over, so a huge jump there. Also something to keep in mind, and, and you'll hear us talk about it throughout the telecast today, but... Uh, qualifying pins did carry forward from the, the qualifying to the match play. So basically in, a, in an event like this, which is why you see it uh, scrolling after 10 games across the bottom because uh, everything is a carryover. So it's just one big grand total going uh, until we get to the step ladder. So um, anyways, there's a huge gap there, you know, 107 down to 36. And... Uh, yeah, there's 30 bonus here during the match play, so that does help make up a chunk of that. But uh, that's one of the biggest gaps that there is. So uh, separating one and two right now from three and below. Uh, anyways, uh, fourth, William Jones, plus 26. Fifth, Brent Newman, plus 21. And sixth, Zach Mitchell at plus 18. So those top six right there after qualifying were the only ones that were able to find a way to stay positive from there uh, it drops to seventh place at minus seven and goes all the way down to one of the lowest cut numbers that we've had in quite some time but when you take 24 people uh, that is going to make for probably a little lower cut too there's there's a chunk that are maybe going to find it so to speak uh, and then there's going to be some that don't um, and that's more the majority, and so some of those are still going to find their way into the match play. That's just math. Uh, so anyways, it goes all the way down to minus 109. That was 24th place. 25th and 26th did cash at minus 112 and minus 115. I uh, just got flipped over into the comments section here on Facebook so I could read and uh, yes Keith Beck you are correct uh, Corbett does have beer thanks to Keith Beck uh, that was uh, it was kind of funny somebody came out of the bar and said is Tom Corbett bowling today and I said yeah he sure is he's actually right down there and they said somebody's on the phone and would like to buy him a couple of beers so anyways turns out to be Keith Beck so thank you very much Keith uh, he greatly appreciates it and he shared one with me so thank you from me too all right so we do have a couple games under our belt in match play now not a whole lot has really changed other than that gap that I was talking about between second and third uh, well first off first and second flip-flopped um, Will had won 60 his first game. 
Chad had 180. Will had 190 a second and lost. Chad had 220 and won. Uh, so there was the difference between the two of them from qualifying made up. So Chad has taken over the lead after 10 games um, at 1737 total. Will at 1731. So still very close, just six apart there. Um, let's see here. From there, it does drop to 1696, and that's Briley Howe. Um, but he obviously made up, uh, let's see, so he's uh, 35 behind Will. And he was uh, 71 behind Chad during the qualifying bits. So uh, he's made up 40, and that's because he did win both of his matches. He did only shoot 181 in one of them, uh, but still a winner in both, so that 60 bonus was big. I got some admin things that uh, I'm going to have to attend to here for a minute. So I'm going to jump off quick and I'll be back as soon as I can.
All right. Jump back on here for a second. Apologies. We had a little glitch with the spreadsheet. And uh, anyway, so the scores that you were seeing uh, were just a uh, reprinting of the qualifying scores. It wasn't adding in any of the uh, match play scores. We've got that fixed. So now scrolling along the bottom are the uh, <coughs> corrected scores. It didn't really change much of anything. Uh, where I left off, we had noticed that Briley had closed that gap a little bit. Um, he won his third match, so he's won all three. Um, and that gets him to 23-34. Matafee is at 23-36, so Briley has moved to within two pins. Uh, Chad has only won two of three. And, uh, you know, nothing huge for games, but he still maintains that lead. He's got... Uh, about 20, looks like 26 pins on Will, so about 28 pins on Briley. So realistically, this is definitely cinched right up. Uh, we are back to being extremely tight and close here. Uh, pretty much all the way through, boy, the top six or seven, everything's still pretty within grabs within about 100 pins to, uh, to seventh place. So as it goes down, even though you can see it scrolling there, Chad leading, uh, Will second, Briley third. Uh, again, Matt Payne has moved into fourth at 22.90, uh, and then Brent Newman at 22.75. So that's going to round out uh, the top five here. The bonus wins there. Um, right now, Will is definitely, uh, that's kind of why he's dropping a little ground. Um, he's only won one match. Uh, he had a 160 and a loss, a 190 and a loss, then now a 217 and a win in game three. Uh, these guys are just starting game five. Um, so game four, uh, scorekeepers are down collecting scores right now. So uh, we should have those here coming probably within maybe 10 minutes. Um, but they're just starting game five. Uh, sixth place, Brandon Brown, 2267. So that puts us almost exactly 100 pins uh, from our leader right now. So it is pretty tight, especially when you're talking 30 bonus pin. The only thing I'd say here is I'm not really sure that I'd see anybody rattling off any uh, too huge of a game. They, they definitely haven't seemed to crack open enough to, uh, to be very forgiving for any kind of a large game. I had mentioned before I had to step away that there was a stat that I found pretty cool and I, I'm not really sure if we've had anything like this this tight before but our spreadsheet program for qualifying calculates um, high game each game low game each game and then the overall average of the field each game as you go through qualifying uh, and I've never seen it this tight so uh, game one, this is the entire field, 178. Then from then, uh, there on it goes, 175, 177, 175, 175, 174, 175, 174. There's a 178 and a 177, otherwise everything else is 75 or 74. So, uh... When you start looking at patterns and, and how they play, uh, fairness of it, one side to the other, all of this kind of stuff, uh, this obviously brought the field down to an extremely level pace uh, across the board. So, anyways, kind of a cool stat. We never had a game higher than 261 during qualifying. Uh, and then there were two 250s. Otherwise, high game each game was no more than 240 outside of that. So, like I said, not a pattern that's going to open itself up and, and all of a sudden allow itself to, uh, to really be scored openly on. So, I'm not sure how much things will change. I think more than anything, guys are going to have to try and battle to make sure that they just don't get into such huge trouble that they drop 70, 80 pins in a game by shooting 130, which we saw a fair amount of for sure.
All right, so this month we also did have a bonus female cacher, so that was really cool. Um, and I, I apologize, Justine, if you've actually bowled uh, a CBA before, but Justine Brookover was our uh, bonus female cacher. I don't recognize that name, so uh, pretty cool cashing in your first CBA event. And then we had three bonus senior cashers. So Greg Strike, uh, Matthew Zastrow, uh, also his first time caching. Uh, at least since I've directed, I don't recognize the name. Maybe he had bowled before. Uh, and John Holmes be your three bonus senior cashers. And we had two bonus youth. One thing that I really love to see today. Um, Cedarvale has a, a very good youth program, has for a long time. They have a large youth uh, contingent out of this house and they definitely showed up today so that was awesome to see um, we had a lot of, of youth bowlers I had um, two of them Brady Gustafson and Dakota France that actually made the cut but we had so many that we actually have two bonus senior or uh, youth cashers so Brooke Salzman and Trey Henriksmeyer um, they are your two bonus youth cashers. Uh, they'll have $90 put each into their smart funds uh, for bowling today and cashing. We actually had a one game roll off, so along with the pattern being difficult, and, and this month uh, we're using a format of re-oil along with qualifying pins carrying over. And of course, a re-oil means you've added 30 40 minutes, uh, especially with 79 entries and 24 lanes needing to be re-oiled uh, for match play. So anyways, uh, we're definitely running late, but um, as of late, I guess this has kind of been the deal. The step ladders don't get started until closer to 5.30 or maybe 6 o'clock because we have been getting some really good entries. So anyways, we did have to have a one-game roll-off as well because there was a tie for the last cashing spot. So um, we had Bill Fabian and Patrick Hovda, who uh, both were at minus 115. And the way that worked out is Bill is a senior and Pat isn't. So if Pat won, he cashes, obviously. But Bill would also have cashed because he would have got that bonus senior cashing spot, the first one. Um, but uh, anyways, Bill was actually able to hold on. He won the match. So he got the last cashing spot. Then, of course, from there, that opened up um, an extra senior bonus cashing spot to be had. So uh, John Holmes was the benefactor of how that extra match played out. Um, but again, yeah, there was a tie for the last cashing spot. That was a whole full one game roll off. So uh, that's another thing that's pushed us a little behind today. So here we are at uh, 535 and, and uh, these guys are in game five, uh, getting close to being done with game five. So I'm actually gonna sign off here cause I'm gonna have to get everybody figured out for position round um, and uh, take care of that business. <clears throat> So there will be a little gap here too, um, not only just in uh, not having commentary, but it's going to take a little bit to get 24 bowlers positioned and try not to get them on the same pairs they were just bowling on, uh, things like that. So uh, bear with us and watch the stream coming up. We'll have position round coming up uh, after this game is done within about 10 minutes. Well, I guess before I sign off, uh, crack staff here has got me the latest update. Uh, Chad still leading, 25.89. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to put this on the ticker yet. I'll I'll do that soon. Uh, Will, 25.80. So he had 2.14 and won his last game. Uh, Chad only had 197, so he gained some ground there. So we're only nine pins between first and second. Uh, Briley had 179 and lost, so a lot of that ground that he made up comes back to the field. 
He's at 25-13, still in third, but now he's back to 60-some uh, out of uh, taking over back in a second. Uh, Newman moved ahead of Payne. He had 183 and a win, 24-88. He's at, so that's fourth. Payne does hold on. He had 158, but snuck out a tie, and he got to 24-63. So that's your top five right behind that. 24-59, Brandon Brown. 24-59, Zach Mitchell. 24-34, William Jones. So those are all within 30, or in other words, the bonus uh, of the stepladder. So this is going to be a good position round, depending upon what these scores from Game 5 look like. So uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to sign off and uh, start doing the position round work. And we'll be back shortly commentary-wise. Hang tight if there's nobody bowling. Position round will start after game five within about 10 minutes.
All right. So here's where we stand, heading into the position round. Uh, I don't have the ticker updated. I'll do that after I talk here for a second. Uh, you got Will Matafee, 28-13, against Chad Nelson, 28-02. They're off camera. Um, they're pretty solid in the cut, so uh, I just thought I'd try and put some closer matches uh, in front of us. Uh, third is Briley Howe, uh, 27-58. Zach Mitchell, 26-86. Um, so a little separation there. Briley's 50 back um, from the cut, 44 back from the cut. Mitchell is, uh, you know, basically about 120. So there is a gap there. But here's where it gets tight. So then William Jones, Brent Newman, 26-74, 26-61. Payne Manhart, 26-38, 26-31. So these are the matches that are going to be in front of us. Um, and realistically, between that fifth place spot, 26.74, or I'm sorry, fourth place spot, 26.86, everybody below that all the way down to ninth is within 60 pins. So, one bad game, one, you know, good game, a win, the 30 bonus, it all comes into play here. Um, so basically on the TV pairs, um, we're going to have the matches of uh, Brown and Hoagland, Hoagland, which is ninth and 10th place. They are 26, 10, 25, 90, so they're not even 100% out of this by any means. Uh, we got Payne Manhart, uh, and this is the tightest match, 26, 38 to 26, 31. So realistically, uh, whoever wins is gonna either stay up uh, or flip-flop positions at a minimum, uh, just because there's only a seven pin difference between them. And then you got Newman William Jones on seven and eight. And again, that's 26, 74, 26, 61. So they're 15 pins apart only. So pretty much a mark is gonna make the difference in that match probably. Um, and we'll go ahead and start with that match here. So that's what we got right now on seven and eight. They're throwing their first shot for score. So looks like William was the higher seed. He decided to go ahead and start that match. Pretty good shot there. Newman's first shot. Ah, big four. Not the way you wanted to get underway. 15 pins down and your opponent struck. Definitely would have liked to have started with something a little bit better, but let's see what he make of it. Get two at least. Pattern like this, I mean, it's nothing but spares. It has been all day. Talked about the uh, the pace of, of the scoring pace throughout the day. Um, you know, the 175 average basically across the day for the field. Uh, it's just not a pattern that's going to lend itself to a lot of big scores, that's for sure. All right, lane six there that you probably saw out of the corner. Oh, three out of the four by Brent. That's a little bonus. Uh, was pain striking on lane five. All right, so here's Manhart seeing if he can answer uh, pain strike in the first frame. What did you think I Bubba. Richard, yeah, thanks for answering that question a bit ago. Uh, yeah, pattern is uh, 2020, Beijing. Could also just be uh, titled Very Hard. That would be another another really good name for it. All right, I'll square through one. See Newman crossing over there, just uh, right of your screen on seven. That's all he needed. You're making Brock Hoagland a little jealous. 
He's about 12 for 12, so he's 100%. <laughs> he only wishes that he had 18 opportunities. Oh, good shot for Doug there. Good double to start the match. Again, this is another one. You got a total of seven pins difference. So, um, extremely tight here. The winner, like I said, basically. Going to either, if it's Matt, he's going to jump Doug because of 30 bonus. If it's Doug, well, then obviously he stays where he's at. But um, this is uh, definitely one of the tight ones. And, well, you know, with a couple of strikes going... I mean, these guys, again, they're they're just on the outside looking in. Payne in seventh. Uh, he's 36 pins only out of making the ladder. Oh, and he gets the 4-9 to go. Woo! Uh, and, uh, yeah, Manhart, 26-31. Uh, so seven pins less than that. So... Uh, the winner of this match still definitely has an opportunity to make its way in. And I will run down here in a, a couple of frames. I'll kind of see where that uh, the leaders are, but realistically, uh, Mattafee, uh, Chad, Briley, um, they've, they've got a pretty good cinch on just kind of staying where they're at and hovering. Um, Mitchell outside chance if Briley has a bad game and he has a good game maybe he can jump up a little but they're just going to jockey for position I think a little bit there in the top three to four um, but Mitchell is in a little bit of danger I guess or not danger but a hot seat um, because at 2686 he's you know a solid uh, 75 down from third but he's only 12 ahead of fifth 25 ahead of sixth, so uh, he has to be careful to make sure he doesn't give it away. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, Newman after that, Brooklyn through the face, 610. William Jones able to go strike, spare, strike. Uh, staying clean is huge. The man hurt pain match. Uh, all square through two. Pain has a strike in the third. Dog trips a sixth is there uh, in the third as well. We're all square through three. And this is the kind of match right here. I mean, both these guys can make it in, right? I mean, uh, a high enough score from either one of them get lined up on a pair. Uh, they both could find their way jumping in. Hoglin, Brandon Brown. Looks like we got uh, open a piece and uh, just a strike a piece, spare a piece. So hopefully two for Brock here. Yep. All right. And again, these guys are your ninth and 10th spot. I think probably, I made sure they were on camera because they still were within reach, especially on a pattern like this. But I think they probably needed a little better start than that. Animation out of Manhart. Four bagger to start the match. Uh, there's Brandon with a strike. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to flip this back here because, well, this match is just the most fun to watch because they're actually striking. And throwing pins around while doing it. Man. <laughs> All right. All right, William Jones crossing over on eight. Leaving a five pin at least, something in the middle. 
<laughs> no, it's nothing. Well, no, but it's everybody from fourth to eighth is within 50 pins. So a good game. A good game and a win. An average game and a win. Two hundred and a win would be a big deal. Two big games. There with the win. <laughs> All right. I, I flipped her back over here to watch because basically those guys are ninth and 10th and if they're going to have a chance they needed a, a better start they needed a better start than that right so this is seven and eight right that's why he's not five and six yeah or four five six seven eight nine that's what i meant but yeah yep <laughs> Well, Payne did what he needed to do there. Picked up that spare again. That's huge. And you see William Jones there on seven striking. So that he's keeping that Dutch pace alive. Uh, Newman opened that first frame but has gone Dutch from there. I think both of those guys are going to need to find a way to get a double. Or a three-bagger. Or more. Five-bagger for Doug. Uh, I don't know that I saw a five-bagger all day. So uh, after the re-oil and only six games in, that's uh, that's pretty sweet. It's pretty impressive. Oh, that's a huge Brooklyn for a double there. Huge. Uh, I'm going to run real quick. I'm going to mute it. Uh, run down real quick. So I'm going to see where Zach Mitchell is at because that's the only other number I think that makes a huge difference here. So uh, I'll mute the mic, see where we're at.
All right, well, Briley's got a heck of a game going. He's probably going to shoot 230-ish, uh, and he's going to win unless something super drastic would happen. And I really I didn't look that close, but I don't even know. It might be too late for anything to even happen like that. Um, Zach does have a double up, but he had only gone. Uh, he was 117 in the sixth, right? So he had only gone at like 190-ish pace throughout the game, but now he's doubling. So I suppose he could finish around 220. Uh, I did just see Briley strike again in the tenth there, so he is going to wrap that up, and he'll hold on to third, if not more. Uh, Zach, I guess it really is going to depend upon how this kind of finishes out here. This is as soon as he finishes, I'll run down and catch his final score, and that'll help us really figure it out. So I walk away and Doug goes eight one nine whiff. So he still got two forty five. And that would get him about to right where William Jones is at. That's assuming Payne takes the victory for the 30 bonus. That was a better shot. All right, so yeah, looking over at the Brown Hoagland match. They are just not going to have enough time, enough frames. They didn't start hot enough to be able to make that happen. So we'll watch this Newman-Jones match. If Jones gets the bonus, then he's going to be in okay shape for sure. Yeah, I mean, he can make himself in okay shape on his own. Wow. That's been a good pair for these guys. See Payne on lane uh, six there to the left of the screen. Uh, striking, that's uh, coming off of a spare, but four bagger, spare strike, spare strike. He's 169 in the seventh. So he's got 250 uh, possible still. Uh, with the 80 bonus, that would, or 30 bonus, I mean, uh, give him 80 plus on this game, that would definitely jump him up into the step ladder, I would believe here. Oh, we got that 10 to kick out too there. You can see that on lane five. Well, this is a pretty big shot for William here. He needs to keep himself out of any big trouble. Uh, can't afford anything drastic. Well, it's a big double. And again, a lot depends upon if if William wins the match, I think he pretty much holds on anyways. But, uh, well, I guess maybe not. I mean, again, 80 added on to Matt. And he was 46 back. So I guess, uh, yeah, again, here's another pretty important strike for William. See uh, Manhart there on lane six split. So as good of a start as Doug had, he's going to falter a little bit here at the end. That was a huge turkey for William there. Huge turkey there. So he can actually get still the 240 and with the 30 bonus 70. Uh, that will definitely keep himself in there. So I'm going to mute. I'm going to run and see what Zach and Briley finished at, and then I'll be right back.
248 to 205. Uh, Briley winning, so Briley's going to jump 70 more. He's plenty good, but 205 is going to give uh, Zach's going to be 90, 91 over. Yeah, Payne will definitely jump in front of him. And we'll just have to see what William can finish with, but it does kind of look like if Payne can finish this off, um, that he will actually jump into the ladder. And it kind of looks like Mitchell might find his way falling out. Oh, we won't get the final of all this for a minute. Uh, I'm going to mute it. I got to go start collecting some score sheets. But obviously, we'll be back here in just a little bit with our uh, top five step ladder.
All right. Here we are heading into the step ladder. We're on lanes three and four. My math was right. Matt Payne did have enough to be able to uh, get himself into the step ladder. Zach Mitchell with that 205 and a loss did drop out. William Jones, um, 230 or no, 220 in a win. Uh, gave him plenty. So we have uh, Matt Payne, your number five seed. And he'll be going against William Jones, making his first step ladder appearance in a CBA here. Uh, it's your number four seed. And they're in their uh, practice balls here. So William get the choice of whether he wants to start the match first or finish the match first. So as it shook out, Briley with that big last game and the 30 bonus, 248 and 30 bonus, actually moved all the way up to the number one seed. Um, he didn't get a lot of competition, really. I mean, Mattafee, 183, and Nelson, 176. Both knew that they were in, and maybe a tough pair, who knows, but uh, they didn't really do anything to challenge that. So uh, Briley jumps all the way up to the number one seed. Will holds on to the number two spot. Chad holds on to the number three spot. And we have our four and five right here in the first match. Nine and ten. Huh? That should have wrapped up the practice there. Get these guys to a race mount and we'll be underway. We'll see who decided what to do what. Looks like uh, William has decided to go ahead and start the match. We are underway here at Cedarvale Lands. CBA Stepladder Finals. Yeah, that's one, a good way to start your first stepladder match. Get the nerves out of the way. Throw a good shot. Nice and slow, too. Good good release. He didn't uh, add any extra to that. I'm going to go move this uh, scoring camera a little. Hold on. Huh? Oh, oh, good. Okay. 
It's 20 degrees cooler down on this end than up there, easily. Because they open the doors up there all the time. All right, sorry about that. Back on, had to move that uh, scoring camera. Somebody must have bumped it along the way here. Um, so uh, we see William start off with that strike, and then I didn't see what the single pin was that Matt left, but obviously missed that, and then now we've got a bucket, and um, this isn't a pattern I'd want to shoot. Well, I don't want to shoot a bucket anywhere, but this is a pattern I don't want to shoot a bucket on, that's for sure. All of them? Yeah. Easy to do. Like I said, I certainly wouldn't want to be shooting at that right now. All right, let's see what William does here. Hey! hey. Tom Corbett. How's it going, Jason? Well, you left me alone. I did. Like all day. I know. So um, this has been tough. I made the cut today. You know, I made the Here's, cut. Look at this. Oh, and I got some bracket money. money. I like it. What a day. You know, this making the cut. You know, it's not my first rodeo. This wasn't your first. I didn't announce that it was your no, first cut. So it wasn't. You must have made one. No, before. it's not my first rodeo making the cut. Yeah. But you know, yesterday I went to my first rodeo ever. I saw that the Hamill Facebook. Rodeo. Yeah. So that was my first rodeo, uh, as far as a rodeo. I remember uh, somebody asking that. But making the cut this is not is my first rodeo. rodeo. So anyway, I yeah, thought I'd bring it. Uh, they, look, uh, they look like they were easy out there. How'd you find match play to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you about this guy who picked up a frog. I heard this at the rodeo. <laughs> There's a guy who picked up a frog. He was talking. He said, hey, pick me up and you kiss me. I'll turn into a princess. So the guy picked up the frog and he took it and he put it in his pocket. Didn't do anything with it. He's walking down, walking down, and all of a sudden, a frog is bouncing around. He says, hey, 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 He picks him up. He goes, hey, I told you that if you pick me up and kiss me, i turn into a princess. He goes, at my age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you know, that was at the rodeo. <laughs> I actually get it and probably agree. At my age, talking frog would be pretty cool. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So anyway, uh, talk about bowling today. Yes. This was a Beijing uh, pattern world or something. Pattern, yeah, okay. world ten pin. So they started out um, soft. <laughs> soft. I had to use soft bowling balls. That's what they mean. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So I tried to play out. I, I thought maybe you know because I know you know the rule thirty one. You wanted a break point around eight or something like that. People get to eight different ways, and I was trying to use a pin down jackal ghost. That's kind of surface wide. Well, I, I use a pad up to about five hundred on it. And I, if I rolled it right up around seven or eight, it was good. But if I got like six, I missed light. If I got like nine, I was high. But anyway, I, I tried to stay pretty clean at 170, 190. Then I look around, and everybody's shooting the same, no matter where they're playing on the lane. Yeah. There's a couple guys that are always in there. So then I said, okay, well, I, that really wasn't working. So I started moving in with different balls, pin up stuff, and that would flip harder. And, and I, I'd go like 180, 190, 180, 190. But then the last two games... They got actually, I thought, kind of easy. I think the scores kind of went up the last couple of games. They did, but then we re-oiled. Well, then we re-oiled, yeah. So uh, re-oiling took it from being, if you wouldn't have re-oiled today, I don't think they were too dry for uh, everybody to keep moving in. I don't think they were too dry if you wouldn't have re-oiled today. Now, we, no. We don't know that, but this, what you said was just fine to do because there were 79 bowlers today. So they beat up the lanes pretty pretty good. But you didn't start out at third or fourth arrow. Right. So therefore they stayed, there There got to be a little bit of hold at the end. Then after they re-oiled, then I think the true pattern came into play because they hooked earlier and when yep. it came off the back of the pattern, it went left. Mm -hmm. So, and of course you could move in deeper and deeper and then you you know miss a little bit to the right. But um, what I thought, if you left something that was together, two, four, five, six, mm -hmm. tens, four, sevens, even, you know, single pins. The spares actually were not that tough because where you threw it is where it went. It didn't go to, if you use a spare ball, of course. Yeah, you yeah. threw it out, the, when they had the end of the pattern, just went right to where the, the pin was. So that part was easy, except for the fact that you had a lot of washouts, a lot of splits, and, and of course you, you could chop things. Yeah, that was, so that was a, a bucket for pain yeah. in a second. I didn't see the single pin, I was adjusting the camera, but, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been 
obviously just sweating, working super hard in this booth all by myself. I know. All match play. You, you probably lost your voice. Oh. <clears throat> so, but Keith I've seen hey, this by the, a Keith, lot. Keith Beck. Thanks, Keith Beck, for keeping us non parched yeah. I thanked him already, but okay. yes, yes, that was uh, that was awesome. Um, but I've seen this a lot, right, through this match play, where it just seemed like any combination of multi pins was an absolute adventure. Yes, three six tens. Uh, you were the one that told me you had uh, I, I, done I, the six ten three times two different ways. I went back to back. I go flag and two strike, chops or something like six that. Six ten, and I chopped the six off. Next frame, six ten, and I missed the six on the right. Get the ten. And then a few games later, same thing. I skid by the six because I didn't want to chop it, and so those things were tough. Yeah. But I picked up. I picked up. I couldn't remember what it was. It was like the one three five nine. I'd oh, never, what a tip! Ooh, that of was the pretty good by there. William yeah. Jones making his first step ladder. First step yeah. yeah. Nice young man, uh, good bowler. I can't remember what university he bowls out of. William, Mo no, I'm not sure where it is, but his dad, David Jones, would tell me. Uh, very good young bowler. A simple game, yeah, which very. gets a fair amount of revs on it. Yeah. Too, so. yeah. so Payne had 240, 230, 230 his last game. He had position two, wrong? Yeah, he had 250 going. Manhurt and Payne started with the front four apiece in position round, okay. and we thought both of them were going to jump into the ladder. Um, Doug chopped a spare and then missed a single pin. Eventually, you know, settled into I don't know where he finished seventh or eighth somewhere eighth, in there. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he had a chance to yeah, get well, in. He had but two was last game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. he, he dropped. Like I said, they both had started extremely strong. But Matt finished it off pretty good. Jumped himself into the ladder. Um, I see that. I'm just looking at the so that I'm, wasn't... I'm a little interested to see what five and six gives us next game because it looks to be a little bit nicer both on the right and the left. And we don't have any lefties left, so that doesn't really matter. But. Yeah, right. um, it definitely seems like it's got more shape to it or ability to shape it. Three and four looks kind of ugly. Well, it, it kind of does, but so I had uh, in, in qualifying, I had a game on three and four and seven and eight. And then uh, I had one game on seven and eight in match play. Seven, and I think his end is easier. It seemed to skid through the heads a little bit easier. Though so seven and eight, I bowled well both times I was on that pair. And... It's cooler down at this end of the house. Big time cooler. I'm thinking they don't maybe use this end of the house as much, so maybe the surface is a little cleaner. Ball gets through there a little bit easier. Track's not burned out as much. I don't know. All these little things come to play when you have sports shots out there. You don't notice yeah. as much in league. Well, and it is 15 degrees cooler on this end of the Absolutely. house than the other. Uh, and that affects how the oil is going to play on the lane too. So um, it could even be just as much as that. So working on a double here, um, Payne did find a way to a, a three bagger after that double open to start. So uh, it's uh, he still needs to keep the foot on the gas. He, has, he hasn't opened himself, and, and that's uh, what you do. William Jones with a turkey is mm -hmm. him. Uh, yeah. He's, so he's got a, like a 12 pin lead in the fifth frame. Nope. Anybody's match still. It is. Because all I know sure. is they're not going to both strike and go off the sheet. So somebody's going to leave a six count oh. spare, chop this, do that, or yeah. something. So, so I mentioned this stat earlier. Uh, if anybody was listening earlier, uh, sorry to hear it again, but I think this is a pretty cool stat. Our spreadsheet, our spreadsheet is going to calculate the overall average, right, of each game, and so it's the field average oh, okay. each game. Going for four. And that's the same lane that Payne oh, left the. Uh, oh, out. just left the uh, four pin only. Uh, uh, same pain, uh, lane Payne left the bucket on. Uh, take a look at the field <laughs> average. Not so much. The, look at the consistency yeah. of those across the board. Wow, I've never seen anything like it. So, if Jason hasn't mentioned, I'm looking at it for the first time. The first game field average of all 79 bowlers was 178. Second game, 175, 177, the third, 175, 175, 174, 175, 174. That's the field average every game. That 
is really odd. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yes, it How is. How flat line uh, yeah. is that across the board? And then you look at the high games. See, 240, 240, 250, 240, 240, 260. Oh, that was Ron Cleveland. 240, 250, right? Nothing wow. above. That's unbelievable. So You talk about one of the fairest <laughs> Playing yes. patterns from right to left, yeah. from style to style to this pattern just tamed everybody it really to did. a 175 average yeah. and, <laughs> and a 250 it, high game. Yeah, exactly. I didn't have a 250 high game, but I had a 230 <laughs> and 220, which got me well into the cut. And that and equals you, 50. Oh, there you go. Okay. And that's all you needed to do. Uh, we have to go see what Davy Jones wanted. He was coming out. Oh, I'll that's right. right back. Yeah. Yeah. So there we see Payne, uh, you know, I, a lot of, I bowled a lot with Matt over the years and sometimes, you know, uh, him and I would talk and obviously the one thing that happens to him is speed. You know, he gets a little firm with things. Um, this, this looks like maybe one of those times. He's left the buck, get to, all right. Left the bucket and then two pieces of the bucket there. Like I said, he did find a way to the three-bagger there, so this still is a match. And, I mean, uh, you know, William um, didn't strike that four-bagger, almost left the bucket himself or three pieces of it. So uh, this still is, is a match. Um, but I think Matt needs to find a way maybe to just dial it back a half a mile an hour uh, and let that ball shape a little bit better. Doug Manor. Hey. Doug, we watched you uh, give it a valiant effort here. Uh, it was right on TV right in today. front of us. Oof. Yeah, I tried was to that, intimidate Patty, but it didn't, didn't work. That didn't work. No. Yeah. You settled into eighth. That's a good day. I'll take out it. Out of 24. Qualified, I mean, well, out of 79, but yeah. Qualified like 11th or 12th. That sounds about right. I got it right here. Manor. For a brutal pass. 11th. Oof. 11? Well, that's a good day, Doug. Minus 28 on the qualifying. Get in there, Corby. I mean, that's a over eight games of a brutal pattern. That's a good qualifying set. Yeah, Who was minus you know? 28? Doug. Doug Manhart was yeah, minus 28? No, 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 wait. That, that must be a typo. No. Hey, you know what? 244 the first game, 144 the second well, yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> what I meant was I can't believe he was that low. Right. Oh, I watched whatever. him bowl. He even chopped a 4-7. <laughs> that, I was like two for seven on those today. Two for seven? I was seven. just discussing the four sevens and six tens, and I told you that, Doug. Yeah. Same thing, right. and I was just telling him, yep. we were just discussing that, whatever. So. All right, so. All right, we got here. Oh, by the way, St. Ambrose is where uh, William there Jones. We go. I knew it was a private. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, the old solid yeah. ten. And then don't forget to take pictures after this first match of the top five. Oh, good thinking. Well, that's what Davy Jones wanted to come over here to tell us. Not Davy Jones of the Monkees, but no, the other Davy one. Davy Jones of Davy Jones's locker. I get locker. In locker there. guy. Yeah, see, something like that. even though it doesn't work. Did there, you give him that locker? Buy him that no, locker? No, Davy Jones's locker. locker. No, I didn't, but I I should. You should. Why didn't I? <laughs> Why didn't I? Missed opportunity. Well, what did he do with it? Put, put stuff it in, in there. Put it in an ocean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, he should pick up this uh, temp because temp I thought were. Like I mentioned, spares yeah. were actually pretty easy because they didn't skid Ooh. to the gutter. Oh, oh yeah. And I right. need the uh, expiration month of year. Well, I might have to ask. It's never. It never expires. All right, so uh, you can see the score at home, one, uh, at home 146 in the seventh with a spare up in the eighth there for uh, William. 133 in the seventh, spare up in the eighth. 13 pin match, so we are uh, basically one mark at this point different. Which you could look at the first and second frame and you would see the difference. That was a good shot. I was uh, just, oh. I was just dis first, talking first, to the server uh, who brought us another no. beverage because I want to thank no, Keith no, Beck no, again no. for uh, buying that for us. So he bought Jason, Hanson, and myself a couple of beers today. So Keith Beck, thanks again. And 
when you uh, ever come back here again, I'll return the favor. Absolutely. So here's the guy right here. Uh, well, Matt Payne needs to uh, strike out here to put, to give, I think, to give himself any kind of a chance. Yeah, I mean, he's 13. Two team. Yeah. Well, then he would force William to double in the town. Yeah, and William's only 26. So. Yeah. But now striking is that. striking is not easy. No, no, it's but, not. But if and he just goes nine spare, nine spare, or nine spare, or whatever, and then 190, all right, then Jones just needs some count. So he needs a double in there to force him to have a good 10th frame. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know he's he's got a a guy that's in his first step ladder, ever. Correct. So yeah. there's nerves, you know. Oh yeah. Yes. You're bowling the CBA president, and guy and that's a, and got a titles, and you know there's so yeah it's 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 not over. But I I had said earlier, you know Matt Matt has that tendency of getting firm, getting get a little too firm, and and there's a couple of shots there, kind of in the middle. Uh, late middle, yeah. where those spares are, I think he well, just gassed it a little bit. And I'm not sure what he did in that first frame because I don't remember what he shot at, but I'm yeah. sure he's still kicking himself for missing for the sure. Open. Yeah, that's yeah. No and doubt. then if he would have gassed the There's one in the ninth, eleven of the thirteen. Yeah. Yes, if he would have gassed the one in the ninth, he would have carried the four pin. He gassed yeah. that one yeah. on the left. But now he can pick that up, but uh, it's pretty much a uh, moot point right now. Yeah, I mean, well, you can have 189 uh, max and 206 pace of what Williams going yeah. uh, at. So I got to believe uh, Williams is going to move on. He's going to move on. Yep, and he's going to bowl. Uh, who's our third place? We Chad got Nelson. Chad. Oh yeah, yep. Chad told yep. me to be nice. His to him. first step ladder appearance in today. a CBA today. today. First one today. Yeah, yeah. I bowled against him in match play today. Did you win? Well, he had this 197 clean game. That's so, enough to win. Oh, that's enough to win. <laughs> not only that, not only that, he left the full sodi. If any of you know who the full sodi is, all you do is take out the one, two, five, eight, and the and the first shot, so you get four, and then he picked it up. And if he wouldn't have picked that up, I would have beat him, because I had a clean game for one eighty-eight. So this bowling center here, Cedar Bell Lanes, and Fitz's Bar and Grill. There Look how go. easy, always in the 11. Uh, and it, that was slower. An hall of, I, a Hall of Famer told me years ago, slower. Bruce Smith is the name, he said, always in the 11. Yeah. Fifth one, it doesn't matter. You just, uh, yeah. you go through, you don't you don't overthink it, and you just like go up there and bowl. But when you really need something, you do, the adrenaline gets going, and if you can calm those nerves down, that adrenaline, yes, then yeah. you're. Yeah. So, um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say before I, talking about uh, always in the 11th. I'll think of it. Don't worry. Well, you're talking about Cedarvale. Fitz, oh, so, yeah. Full House. Cedarvale Lane, Fitz's Bar here. Brent Prentice, our host. Uh, who, and then... Uh, that was a very good yep. shot. So I think away. what he's doing right yep, there, just trying to make sure he stays loose. And yep. uh, uh, Craig McDonald, who I always called the yep. Lane Man Extraordinaire. Exactly. Uh, he wasn't here today, but he set it up. He told him what he wanted to have. And I think... Didn't they? They're having this same pattern on their Sports Shot yeah. League tomorrow. Yeah, Sports Shot League starts tomorrow. Gody was really excited about the fact yeah. that he gets some more games on yeah. this. Yeah. And so now I'm looking. So they had a full house today. Everybody was eating, drinking, all this stuff. And now at the end of the, the other end of the house on Sunday yeah. nights, they have a sweeper here. Junior. There are junior all kinds gold. of juniors here. Junior gold sweeper. Yeah. There's just a lot of kids here. And there were a lot of kids bowling today. That's, uh, I made mention of that like right away on the, the broadcast too is uh, five and six um, is that there's a good junior program here. It's got a big contingent. They host a lot of these junior gold sweepers. I know Pam Harms isn't here anymore, but she did oh, a lot yes, to really did. develop. Uh, at least I believe it was her that developed. Maybe it started before her even, and she well, continued. She was a junior league know. coordinator, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. they really have done a good job of, of making a lot out of the junior go, well, bowlers yeah. and program. And we had a ton of them here, like you said. Oh. I mean, that was, I, I said it earlier, we had two bonus youth cashers today oh, nice. while having nice. two youth that made the cut. Nice, okay. Right? So, so four youth bowlers cashed today you know um, um that's that's pretty sweet now that you mentioned that bob howe briley howe's yeah. dad 
uh, come up to me today. We were talking, and we were talking about stuff and uh, how long is how long do we start letting the juniors? When do we start letting the juniors bowl? And I started thinking back. I think it was about 15, 16 years ago. We decided that um, juniors were allowed to bowl in USBC competition only in single singles. Tournaments. Yep. So they can't bowl our CBA doubles. They can't bowl yep. a team thing, whatever. So we started a smart scholarship thing. We'd only get a couple. It was way back when Brady Stearns started bowling right out of junior. So he had uh, two or three casters. I was going to give him his, put his money in his smart scholarship fund. And after that year, he decided to go into adult. So I never put his money into the Smart Scholarship yep. Fund. And then he, of course, he's been one of the best bowlers. He, he was one of the, he is the youngest and the quickest to make the CBA Hall of Fame. One of the quickest to make the Hall of Fame. So, uh, but that Smart Scholarship thing has been good to get all these juniors. Oh, yeah. So I think maybe you should do it right after the practice or maybe before they take their last practice. You want to? No, oh, Matt Payne will stick around. We'll do it after yeah, this game. Matt will stick, Matt'll stick around. around. Yeah, Matt will stick We just have to take pictures for yeah. the top five. We'll do we that a little later. We got off topic, and I oh, forgot we needed a picture talking so about Chad the junior Nelson's program here. But, yeah, oh, Connor Plaggy did say it was a 10-pin. 10-pin that Matt yeah. missed in that first frame. So, But, yeah, to continue what Tom was saying, the, uh, the junior program here is large. <clears throat> junior gold is uh, junior gold's coming up real soon. Uh, I think the the gal that was working the counter today is going to junior gold, and she said she leaves Thursday. So I know junior gold's just around the corner, and this is a junior gold sweeper that uh, they're hosting tonight, uh, and it's got a lot of them here. Uh, it's it's just amazing. A lot the, of them. Yep. The top notch really juniors that we see coming out bowling on these tough sports shots yeah. is amazing to me. Well, and I love it because it's such a change of direction from, let's just say, maybe 15 years ago or so, where everything was just house. I mean, I, and I'm, I'm going to throw out some names, not because of anything to do with their bowling, but because of age, right? So I know, like, uh, Vermilier and uh, I know Eric Schott also, they bowled in a Flaherty's Junior League that was like a scratch junior league. Like, oh. I think it was like a Friday afternoon or something like that. Correct. But I mean, everybody averaged like 240 in the league as a junior, right? right? Somewhere in there, at least, like the junior program started to come around to the we need to bowl on more difficult stuff instead of house patterns to develop our youth to yes. bowl competitively in the future because they won't bowl on house patterns competitively. Um, that's I. I don't know when that all started. I don't know when that started coming about, but that's a huge change of direction because I know oh, absolutely. just like regular bowling, league bowling, adult bowling, focus was on house for so long and how high people could average and how many honor counts they could get. Uh, yet we all know that doesn't actually equate to talent good, good or bowlers. ability. No. Yeah. Let me tell you, when we first started, I don't remember exactly when the years where we first started putting out different patterns we when and these and the patterns that were out when they first came out with some sort of I'm not sure to call them recreation challenge whatever they really were in sport but there was a lot of complaining people would not bowl the CBA because the shot was too tough and they could go to other places where they could average 230 or whatever there's a lot of complaining but we stuck to our guns saying that if we want to bowl against the top bowlers in the state here there come on bowl on something that's just not a, a house shot where you're just going to shoot numbers right. so that like that got to be just a joke i'm going to hold these guys up for a minute uh speaking okay. of that junior league when they were done oiling they wanted to make some announcements for their bit and i didn't want our guys to gotcha. get jumped on by the announcements so hold our guys up for this. okay Okay, sweeper bowlers, I apologize. Thank you for your patience. It was uh, a, a bit of uh, figuring out what was happening tonight in the midst of driving home from the campers. So I apologize you guys didn't get noticed fast enough. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, you can um, hear the. So we're uh, do 10 minutes of practice. I know that we should take the, top the lady who's running the junior gold sweeper time, is talking over the microphone right now. So Chad and William might just wait until she's done talking before they start their match. <laughs> Chad, being the higher seated bowler, uh, gets the choice if he wants to start or finish. So 
Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing. It looks like he's going to let Williams start the match. The next two weeks so. for most of you or a lot of people are at Junior Gold, so we'll be back at the end of July. Um, if you're, I feel like we have a few new people, so if you're new, follow us on Cedarville Youth Sports Shot Sweeper Facebook page. And if you're new, I apologize, this isn't our norm. We really do 6 to 6 o'clock on a normal basis. Um, I think that's it. We'll get you turned on for 10 minutes of practice. Uh, William, it's probably the worst shot that he's thrown in the last two games, and I'm not sure if he, uh, you know, sometimes even if you had your practice, your adrenaline just gets going, and you want to make that first shot good, and you just kind of throw it through the break point. What I've been watching during the, when I was watching Chad warm up over on 9 and 10, and I watched him with his uh, four practice shots, he got two in each lane, he was slow hooking the ball. So he wanted to make sure he got that ball, I'm not sure what he's using, but he made sure he got that ball down the lane at the, the wherever that break point is, which is usually right around the marker down there, about 10 board. So, and he can adjust his speed. He's got some shiny storm ball. Do you know what, he, what Chad is using out there? But I was just remarking about how slow hooking he's doing it right now. He was using uh, the UC2 when I bowled him in the match. Well, that's an RSTX2 right there. Oh. So he set that down right, kind of right at the line, but he just fluffed it out to the break point and let the lane take it back, which is easier said than done when there's a... Uh... Dark code? Okay, that could be. He only brought like that's, 15 balls with him, so I don't know which one he used. I, uh, that's either dark coat. He also has an IQ Tour Nano Pearl. I tried that Not today. Not a popular ball with a lot of people, but also kind of same color it, it, with it, same edge. Look at his hand position. He's trying to get on it, just kind of, he's not underneath it. He's not going to try to like get under and get all of it. He's just going to kind of like dump it right there, yeah. slow it down. And of course that, he, yeah. That so was, for Chad, that's actually kind of his uh, circle it a little bit. Yeah, right. Uh, which for him would definitely help get it through the heads, through the front. But it is going to give you that down lane more. He didn't get that one out. It, he no, missed in. Not to the he spot. missed in on that one. But but his practice shots were all just like that. Maybe a little softer or something. I don't know. Whatever. But he's just going to get two. He knows you're not going to need 230 to win this yeah. match. No. Uh, both guys are going to open one, maybe three, two or three times. Yeah, right, right. And, uh, and I, well, I was watching people all day today. Um, it, I don't know if it's just the youth or, or, or maybe it's just not youth, it's just uh, not uh, experienced enough, whatever, that you, if somebody's striking around you, you don't need to be striking all the time. It's not going to take 250 over to make the cut. Right, right. Just because somebody is, you can't just go up there and go, oh, God, I need to strike, I need to strike. No, yeah, right. Look stay at that within guy. yourself. Look at that guy. Stay within yourself. Like Chad that. actually always tells me, he always says oh. this, stay within yourself and, you know, and just, Thank you. And just pick up your spirits. So we had to have El Presidente come in the booth to tell yeah, us to change, to tell the us camera. change the camera. So we're just talking. We're not even knowing it. You guys aren't oh, seeing what's going on. This one too. El Presidente, come over here, Matt Payne. Hi. We want to know that first that match you bowled against William Jones. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> what did you miss in that first frame? I really didn't see it. Okay. Ten pin. So the just ten by pin. a hair to the left. Okay. So it then looked. we're going, okay, if you get up in the ninth frame, if you you didn't strike there, but if you get the first one in the tenth, you might you put some pressure on him. But missing that single pin in the first frame, it comes back to haunt you in the tenth frame. Absolutely. So Absolutely, and and I make those two spares. That's a tighter, it's a tighter match. Oh, I missed a bucket. So the bucket's a little tougher. Sure. Uh, ten pin you shouldn't miss, as we all know. Yep. But uh, and then of course William, it didn't matter what he did in the tenth frame because there's no pressure. He already won the match, right. so okay. it didn't matter the score. But if you would have kind of say the first one at tenth, or maybe the second one at tenth, and if you have that extra ten pin in the first frame, yeah. So make spare, 
bears are huge. Yep. And all of a sudden it got loud in here with all these junior bowlers <laughs> in this junior gold. It's like qualifying they're, all over again. Yeah, they're flying all over here. So we were just discussing, Jason and I were just discussing how Chad is kind of like slow hooking the ball yep. now. We couldn't tell. Is that a dark code that he's using? We're trying to see it so. out. It looked like it, but when I bowled him, I mean, he was trying to throw crossovers. Yep. Because they, dark code. Yep. they kind of went that way. Whatever. There's a lot of crossovers today. Oh, yeah. It was easy to do because yeah. it was such a fine line. If you pitched it right a little bit, it never got there. You washed out. Or worse, I saw people miss right and go in the ditch. Oh. So there was there was that. And then if you and if you got a little hand, you know, heavy handed, it would go left, straight left. There was. I, that's a tough spare. I was just going <laughs> to. I, I, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't even want the, the two eight. Not, he had the two seven eight. I whiffed on a 3-9 today because I had no idea how to shoot it. <laughs> I mean, I would have picked up a 10-pin with my strike ball. I'm going, why do I use a spare ball if I can pick up a 10 with my strike ball? <laughs> going at a 3-9 with them. But what, what, actually, what I was telling Jason earlier, spares actually were not that tough today because the ball, when it got off the end of the pattern, if you use a spare ball, it didn't go left. Right. And it wasn't a lot of oil where it just skidded all the way to the right. So if you hit your target, you had to spare, unless yeah. you chopped it or something. But single pins were actually fairly easy today. They were until later in the later in the day, because then you, when you went cross lane, it would kind of read early if you hit traffic, so, and everybody was kind of in. I mean, they all kind of played in that. You know, it, it threw me. I was talking to Jason about this. So this was a 39 foot Beijing, uh, whatever it was, and it was so the rule of 31. You should have your break point around eight. Yep. So however you get to eight is. Didn't wait. You could, you know, you could be in or you could be out. Uh, but they hooked a whole lot more than I thought they would yep. today. Earlier, I tried to play way out and roll it up around seven or eight up to the pocket. I had like 170, 190 to start. I'm looking around and I'm right in it because people are <laughs> doing the same did. thing. Yeah, exactly. And then, I, but I started seeing that the ball hooking more, and I instead of using a pin down dull ball, I decided to use some of the pin up, and I moved in. And I actually, I got kind of lined up and. And then they got into my wheelhouse at Fourth Arrow. <laughs> oh wait a minute, that's really not my wheelhouse, but not it, mine either. But it was for today because I finished at 230, 220, because I was able to get the ball through the heads, and they were hooking enough where the ball finished, and I could yep. strike some. Yep. And I was I was super surprised at how much hook. Oh, good they had. shot, William. It seemed like all the hook was at the back end of the plane, which is where it should be because it was 39 feet, but it seemed very very sharp on the back end it, early, and then it would tame down. And then, then it went just haywire. It was got wonky, and then it got back to being okay, and then it went, yeah. It was oh, never good. It was, it was never, never good. <laughs> no, it was never good. And so th there's 32 lanes in here, and it's a big, all 32 lanes in a row, and two doors, and most people use the doors at the high end of the house. Yeah. And I think those lanes down there from the middle of the house up, say, you know, 15, 16, up to, the, they're probably used more. And I know when I, I started going up that way, and the approaches got tackier, it got more humid. Yes, it did. And so when I got back down here to the low end on 3, 4, 7, 8, and 11, 12 is where I finished, I had three pretty decent games because I think the oil held a little more. It, 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 my ball was able to skid through the heads a little bit easier. So different pairs are obviously oh, yeah. the key in any place you go to. But when you get 79 bowlers, we had five, six on every pair, and it took like seemed like forever yep. I mean what time is it now it's a uh, seven, seven and we started at nine <laughs> and qualifying took a long time which is really cool that we get all these bowlers but it's not only the traffic on late it's the time the, oh yeah uh -oh. oh he got at least he got the three pin on his three nine <laughs> I just whipped the whole thing so let's get back to that shot that he threw his first one so he just got done throwing three really good shots then he set one down short yep. and he whiffs the hand pin or barely hits the hip the whole chunk except they hit the head <laughs> pin. pin but it's so it was so easy to do unbelievably easy to do yeah and chad's just gonna stay right in there take his time slow hook it and it's gonna be within 10 pins this match, oh, yeah. one Absolutely. way or another i don't know what the score is gonna be but it's be within 10 pins does chad will find something and get him give him a double or something and correct get him right back into it oh at least yeah. he won't chop the 610. <laughs> And when I started a game, I had strike, strike, 6, 10, chop the 6, next frame, 6, 10, miss the 6 on the right, but get the 10. <laughs> Should have had spare, spare, but I only missed them by like a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Wow, this is so, I'm looking at his junior gold qualifying sweeper. They're yeah. bowling from lanes 11 and 12, all the way up to 31 and 32. And there's got to be, what, two to... Two on a lane? Two on a lane, five on a pair, three to yeah, four or five, five on a pair, depending on whatever. So. That's, oh. It's impressive, honestly. Why is Dan Trisky bowling? Because like you're the adults can bowl. Obviously, they can't oh. win anything, but they can bowl. Oh, the kids. okay. Well, why didn't Dan Trisky bowl the CBA? Good question. Well, I'm gonna have to ask him. <laughs> well, he wants to just kick butt into juniors. <laughs> right. He couldn't have done with the CBA because they're all juniors were here. <laughs> that was also pretty cool too to see all the junior bowlers that were bowling oh. the CBA. How nice was that? Uh, last month, same thing. We were at Flaherty's, and there was a lot of juniors. So uh, Bob Margett. Walks, came in. Well, you see, that took a left hand turn and crossed over. He's going, he knows he didn't get that thing down the lane, but he tried right. to be soft, but yet you got to be firm. Yeah. They're tough. Yep. Uh, so, Bob Marquette comes in about the fifth game at Flaherty's last month. He came down to watch his son bowl. It was Father's Day last yep. last month, we bowled. And so, Bob and Dan came down there to watch their son Dave bowl. And Bob's up to me and he goes, I'm walking in. He goes, Is this an MJBT or is this a CBA tournament? There were that <laughs> many juniors. And then you could have said the same thing today. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Until they saw the white hair guy like me. <laughs> a couple of the uh, senior CBA guys come up to me and go, who are these people? <laughs> I go, the future, we gotta let them bowl. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I'm walking in this morning at you know 8.30, whatever, I'm walking in and I, I brought a couple of bowl bags in and I'm, I'm walking out, uh, bringing, uh, to go get another bag so I'm holding the door open and Brady Stearns is walking in but I was holding the door before Brady walked in for like five other juniors I go Brady if there are this many people younger than you here what does that make me you know so and he's 30 29 I don't know yeah, if he's 30 yeah. Yeah, Okay, so they're going to be gonna some announcements. Uh, more announcements, and they're asking Chad if it bothered him if somebody's announcing. He goes, "What do you mean? I don't hear anything anyway." <laughs> you have somebody bowl right next to me. I don't hear them anyway. But uh, it, really, the only reason things would bother somebody is if they're like in their approach going, and it's something that's right. out of the ordinary. But yep. if noise is going on all the time, and somebody's bowling right next to you, it never bother you. But when, stuff is, when it's out of the ordinary, you flinch right. a little bit. Uh, yeah. But now that they know, they're going to be talking. Four on a pair, so if you have four on a pair, make sure you're facing yourself so you're not done ahead of the pass. Uh, make sure you write your name. Did they, re they re-oil down there? Do you know what pattern they put down? Apparently it was a shorter one. I think it was like 37 feet, but I didn't hear so that It wasn't right. the Beijing? Correct. Uh, okay. We tried to tell them that they should just go on our leftovers, uh, and uh, no one no Nobody one wanted to do that? No <laughs> 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 Well, either way, whatever they oiled over this Beijing pattern, which was oiled over the Beijing pattern, right. they're, they're, gonna not be gonna, <laughs> they're not going to be easy. So. But, you know, I don't think, but like we're talking about, these juniors, I don't think they care. They want to bowl on that stuff. Right. Because oh, yeah. they're going to go to junior gold, and they're going to be like this. They're not going to yeah. be a house shot where you can average 230 or 40. And the good, ones, uh, yeah. the good ones oh, persevere. Yeah. All right, we got going on. We got 115 and a six with a spare up for William. Chad and can eight. make it 12, beat 12. up 12 down with a I gotta, strike. Here. I got to believe he's in so in the pocket. He was a little disgusted on his last shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and not because it didn't strike, because he threw it bad. Ooh. Oh, he got the Love kick. Oh, that's got to be the 16 pound bowling ball. Because <laughs> I couldn't do that with my 15 pound. Oh, I can't do it anytime. <laughs> I could have used a little love tap on a 10 over there. The first frame, you wouldn't have missed it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's another amazing thing today. If you if you watch people bowl and some people sneak in the cut or they don't, but they get a crossover, and they get like three or four lucky ones, and, and you bowl next to them, and you, you leave a solid 10, and maybe you miss it. All of a sudden, you look at it. You bowl way better game than them, <laughs> yet they're 40 pins ahead of you. And they go, he's going to make it, I ain't, and I bowl better than him. But yeah. In eight games, though, you're going to come out ahead. It's just but the that's map. Bowling. That's, that's bowling. That's yes. Oh, I, I think, think he, he liked it. He thought he got all that one, which he probably did. But uh, And 
This is not your easiest fare. No. No. It's really nice standing here, talking, and have people fill Bring up your beer. favorite beverage. <laughs> Keith Beck, by the way. Uh, thanks again, Keith Beck. He uh, he called the bar this afternoon to tell them to buy Jason and myself a couple oh, of beers. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, it was. So. A free beer is a good beer. Uh, any beer is good. Free is better. Huh? Right. <laughs> Tried the pocket that time, Jason. It ain't good. We may have to go back to the <laughs> So Chad just said that he tried the pocket, didn't work out so well, he might go left. <laughs> and when he says left, it's not with his feet, it's to the left of the head. Right, you're just going to not to try to project it down the lane, you're just going to set that, let the lane take it to the crossover. Yep. And there was a lot of crossover strikes yeah. today. Which in a way, when they're good this tough, luck comes into play, and I hate it when luck comes into play so much, whatever, but that, that is what happened. That, that shot was very, very good. Off his hand, you can see the side rotation. It just went down and got that marker and it was perfect. Oh, yeah. So he's uh, up by 12 with a strike up and the, uh, going into the ninth frame. The all important ninth frame with some pressure on Chad. Chad's going to go up there and cross over, strike out for four, and, and you never know what will happen. Are you like Chad's shirt, by the way, though? That's all right. He's got that state of Minnesota on the back. I see that. Says the locker guy on the front. Those are the shirts we wear down in Costa Rica, so that we, oh, yeah? they know that we're from Minnesota. So that's, we, that's nice. Yeah. Chad doesn't come with us, but I bought him <laughs> one, along with myself. And Oh, that, really that was shot. really, really good. He got so excited on that, he turned around and walked, what, off. walked off. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to take that, Mr. 36 title. Look, I didn't even reset the machine. <laughs> Chad doesn't strike here, pretty much all over. Yeah. Will but I have Matt a feeling he's going to strike. He's going to be in the pocket, I think. Yeah. Well, no, he's going to cross over. He talked about that. I think the left lane he's going to cross oh. over. Because he was in the pocket last okay. time on six. So five, I think he's going to go Brooklyn. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to really wonder what's going through his mind. He said that up here, and we don't know sure. if that's just in jest or not. Right. But because... You know these right. He's sitting up. He's standing up there. You really can't see him, but we were watching him go through his thought process and seeing his yep. hand going. Going, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I don't know what he's saying to himself, but well, I think he went through his his progression of yeah. what he thinks he he can do and what what's gonna get him a strike because that's yeah. what he needs. So and so, is he going to set a short let a crossover and strike? I would think not. I still yeah. think he wants to throw it. Out far enough so he's going to hit the pocket. I mean, you could, if you want to cross over, you could just ho chunk it, and <laughs> you got to give yourself a chance to go in the pocket. Right. He oh, did. Yeah. Nah. No, I think, yeah. He, he didn't do either. <laughs> <laughs> Went right through the heart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I would have to say. William, it will be moving on to bowl William. That'll be a William William. Oh, we've never had a William William <laughs> match. I don't believe ever. This is first. It's a factoid. We've never had a William William match. William, William. We've William, never had William, one William, ever. William William. Oh, William. Oh, William. Hello, William. Hello, William. Good luck, yeah, William. William. Thank you, William. Just William. think if they're bowling Walter Ray. No. <laughs> hey, when are we going to take a photo before we run the uh, right now? As long as you're going to hang around, we're, we're, well, we're going to take it. <laughs> well. Until you had to leave. Maybe Chad wants to go. Well, he wants, he's going to stick around. So. Oh, all right. Well, then. No rush, I no guess. No rush, exactly. There you go. Here's what he wanted to do. Oh, oh never mind. Oh! oh yeah. Five, why didn't four. you do that? <laughs> all right. So if you can hear Chad down here, he's going, I couldn't talk myself into throwing that crossover. And that's what we were discussing up here, that he, he really wasn't going to do that. Right. He wanted to do that, but he going, no, I had to try to throw the ball in the pocket. So, yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard to... 
Well, if you, for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you could just miss and get three off the left. Yep. I saw a lot of people, you talk about some people throwing in the channel. Uh, I bowled against a guy today, he goes, strike, strike. And then he threw it in the gutter, he got seven, and then he had, I don't know, he started with a double, ended up with like 140. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and I crossed with a guy, he, he had he threw one in the gutter too, but he had a, he had a frame, he went 2-1. He took the 6-9 <laughs> no. out, and then he took the 7 off the left. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is funny. I'm not sure who Brent Stockton is. Okay. I got an idea. Is that okay. Two pay, two pay yeah. 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 yeah, we're going to. Yeah. You know what's funny? Well, do you want to get in? Wants to know <laughs> we're going to take a picture. Let's get, everybody who's picture? here, go down against the wall. <laughs> 109. <laughs> this is getting to be kind of funny. Everybody wants to tell them to take a picture. Corbett, you should mention you should mention that he has to come back here tomorrow night and bowl on the same pattern. Who's he? That gentleman right Steve? over there. Ben, that dummy. Ben Gody goes, hey, what are the chances you want to sub for me tomorrow night? I said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> there is no chance. I need to sit down. I think I dislocated I my head. The guys are going up against the wall. Go go El Presidente's oh. got to go take a picture. So I was told that. There is a the sports shot league here. They're going to put the Beijing pattern down. And Dave Ullman, who bowled today, made the cut. He's stupid enough to come back here tomorrow and bowl on that Beijing pattern. Oh no, he might win because he knows how to play it. I don't know. I think he's going to have a back injury. We should turn our cameras over to what's going on over here because I don't think these guys know. Is there a way to do that? There is. So we're going over here to like three and four. See, I want to watch these guys oh. get lined up. See, they put me short guys in the front, tall guys in the back. Well, they're, they're pretty good. They did Holy a good crap. job on we that. We still have two more matches. Oh. Yeah, we do. Why, right. why is he holding the camera so high when there's always short guys oh, out there? I know. I don't get it. I'm going to have to show him how to do that. All right, anyway, we'll go back. Well, actually, we're going to be on three and four. This next match is going to be on three and four. We're going to have William Jones against oh no they're going to seven and eight why are they going to seven and eight we're going to go william, william and william i mean william well, squared we've never had a william, william versus william match <laughs> we got sunny boy will Let and me go over to william jones <laughs> all right so two oh. practice shots on each Three, lane oh, and will Manafi is going to get the choice of who is going if he wants to start or finish the match first <laughs> What does uh, Nava call her? Not Melissa, but Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. Get Michelle to give her. Get Michelle to give me a massage. <laughs> Practice time. Well, Will Matafi was the leader. Uh, going into wasn't. position around, then he wasn't <laughs> exactly. And uh, although he did win his match against Chad, but then uh, Riley Howe shot 240 to leapfrog uh, both of them to get into the. Which is a humongous game. Oh, it's a huge game. I would say that the, the winner today will be well, mentally drained. I mean, oh. I am mentally drained and I finished okay. the game. just. I didn't there's, feel there's, there's, like there's three I finished it. Like the pattern was so tough and grinding and yeah, yeah, missed a couple yeah, squares yeah, where it's like I actually really did finish it. Or anyone else. Well, it was it was interesting to me because hey Brent, after my first glad you're watching. Thanks for uh, hosting I us. I had a fun day today. I always love coming I down here to Cedarville. That surprised Lane. me. It did, Servers it did. were great. Yeah, Beer is great. <laughs> well, I went love it. 20, but Diane. I I so I that's why you back. take the hold the camera up high. You think there's too many people with not enough hair that you want to get down low? I'm not really sure. So we have a William William match. And I tied a game at 150. John Holmes, <laughs> if you would have bowled today, you would have killed. Him. Oh wait a minute, you did bowl today. If you killed golf today, you would have killed him. Oh, that's what it was. If you would have golfed today, you would have killed him. But he did. He got a senior cancer. That he did. He waited long enough just to see that he got it, and he took off. Hit the yeah. door running once he figured it out. He did. 
They were tough. I just gotta keep saying it. They were tough. No, William is throwing a camel uh, line or oh. hustle. Hustle. No, there's two. There's William. which William? William which William? William. <laughs> no, I, Sonny Willard. Boy, Sonny Boy <laughs> is throwing the IQ. Thing. I don't know about William Jones. William Jones is well. No, he had a camel up there. A camel hustle is what William Mattafi was throwing. And okay. Then the RSXT2 or whatever that was. Is, that That's just William came Jones back is throwing. William Jones. Okay. All but right. I. Don't, I who knows? It's practice. I guess, I guess we should do a Will and a William. Maybe. Right. How about Jones and Matafee? Well, we can go that route. That might make that more might sense. make more sense. Everybody knows who we're talking about. So here we are. Uh, yep. it looks like RSX Will Matafee has decided to have Jones start the match. We talked about that. We talk about it all the time. When you get up in a match, do you do you want to start the match? Do you really pay attention to what lane your opponent likes if you have the choice, or do you just want to? I want to finish the match first. I want to be, you know, get up in the I 10th frame. I mean, if frame. the lanes are that drastically different, yes, I would, I would so pay will, attention to that. You will pay attention. But if they're, if the, if I don't feel the lanes are di that different to what, me. What would you rather do? Uh, Some people want I'd rather start. You'd rather start. Yep. And, 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 so then, the so they finish hands, first. I you have the ball in your hands and yep. finish whatever. So that there's, I talk about it with people all the time. And a lot of people just want to put that score up there and have somebody else try to beat them. And the other people say, well, I want to have the ball in my hand. No matter what happens, I still have a chance to win. Yep. Instead of up there, shut the guy out. There's different schools of thought. If, in fact, you don't have a preference of the lane. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if there was... There might not be a better feeling than to actually just execute something like this. And it's just like, there's just nothing better in that moment in time. I agree with you. There's yeah. just nothing better. That was a very good shot by and Mattafee. That's, and that's why we all... Do this. You know, <laughs> I've been I've been discussing in my mind <laughs> and with a few people in my mind. that you know I'm, my time is getting to the end here of me bowling all these CBA tournaments and I wasn't sure I was going to bowl today and I, and I was going over all week and all month actually and then I, I said yeah I'm going to bowl because I still feel good whatever and then I bowl well and okay this is why I don't quit yep because. I, I, well, it's a great game. I love the CBA, first of all, which is why I sponsor what I do, because I want to make sure this organization keeps going. But, and then to see 79 bowlers out here bowling, yeah. that's, in, it's just In fun. the summer. It's in the in summer. July. Incredible. Yep. That's incredible. 90 degrees. So you, we don't really see those numbers. In, great shot, in, Manifee. Uh, that was winter. awesome. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Chad about this. Actually, I've always talked about this with other people. And some people said, well, you shouldn't probably have CBA tournaments in the summer. We actually get more we get more entries in the summer because there's nothing else to do as yeah. far as bowling. I mean, if you got a lake cabin and you want to go golfing, I understand anybody wants to do that. Whether it's 85 degrees and sunny, you don't want to come in and bowl. That I understand that too. But there are a lot of people who get out all during the day, uh, other weekends, and yeah, I'm gonna. This is my day to bowl, and this is very say, competitive. I will say I wanted to bowl this, this just because it was here at Sierra. Okay, Dale. there's I another love, thing. I enjoy, and I think that's probably another reason why we had a lot of entries. This is a very cool house, um, and uh, that, that came into my thought process. Too. They do it very well. Yeah, I right, talked about it, Brent. Hard. Very good owner here, and we also have Lane Man Extraordinaire, Craig, Craig McDonald. Yeah. Who's uh, just runs this place runs smooth? And although he wasn't here today, but uh, like the best lane um, man in the Twin Cities. Absolutely. But uh, what was his name? Um, Alex Boris. Alex Boris was running the machine that program. I'm assuming by Craig. <laughs> and not that Alex probably couldn't do it. I'm not sure. I'm assuming he probably could be pretty good at it. Alex oh, cool. the solid that nine. The shot. old solid nine. The million dollar nine, nine. pin. That's a good shot. So. Yeah. Um, Doug Manhart, if you oh if you had to shoot <laughs> yes. any single pin for a million dollars, what would it be? Without knowing what the lane is like or anything, somebody put up a pin out there and said, I'll give you a million dollars to pick it up, what would it be? <laughs> this, this answer may humor you because I missed one in my match with pain. <laughs> Maybe a three pin. <laughs> okay, all right. Maybe a three pin. Well, my good buddy Brad Subak, years and years ago, we always discussed this. And That's the nine question. pin for a right hander, we always call it the million dollar oh, nine pin. Yeah. Because. Or the eight pin for the lefty, yeah. Well, yeah, possibly, yeah. Because you don't want to go like cross lane 
get hooked by it or whatever. Actually, I think I'll change my answer. An eight pin. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew I could get I, you over I on that side. It, yeah. And you wouldn't want a five pin for. It's in the middle holy of the lane holy. and it's too close. <laughs> holy moly! Everybody in the. Everyone's raising their hands the or whatever. Is their hand up. Not only do you have to lose a million dollars, you have to buy everybody a drink. <laughs> Although, I left a head pin today. And so Jason was watching me, and I missed a head pin right, and it came back and knocked over the uh, two and the four. Oh, oh, all right, Ooh, Madafee that. getting that lucky strike after Jones leaves a solid night. It's not a fair game. <laughs> but, but so Jason's watching me, and then whatever game, I left a head pin, and I go, I don't know that I can hit this for a spare. <laughs> I did, but I wasn't sure. I couldn't hit it the first shot. Right. Well, I hooked past a five pin today, so oh, that was... I left a five pin, hooked past it. Did you throw a spare ball at it? I did. Yeah, I don't know why you did. How the hell would you hook by a five pin would... spare ball? Well, you just missed so it. So my spare ball is, a stra- is the um, track spare plus, so it has a core in it. So it will pick up and okay. actually hook, All right. and that's what I got. Okay. And it was late in the day, and I'm sure I didn't think it through, yeah, rushed of, it a little bit. Kind of and... like, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. You, know, you kind of... Yeah, you just brush it. Uh, Steve, oh, it's a five pin. I've made this. Oh, wait. Madafee. So, Steve Nava says a three pin would be his million dollar nine pin. It, it won't be a two pin. I've seen him miss many of those. <laughs> he didn't say two, he said three. Yeah, it's not a, yeah. And, uh, two. Yeah, and the, the crew at the desk today was awesome today. Oh, yeah. Uh, they sure. were the best I've seen in a long time. And Rick Soprano, it was good to see you. I hadn't seen you for, I don't know, a couple of years or whatever. It's been a while so, since I've seen you. been a while, so I'm glad you're still out and about. They have a very well-oiled machine here. That's yes. That's why I enjoy bowling here. So that, that, we were talking about that. That came into play in my mind that if I was going to bowl or not, I wanted, because it was Cedarville, I was coming here. And I don't want to say I wouldn't have gone out other places. Let me put it this way. I was coming no matter what. <laughs> when did they, uh, yeah, me too. When I was trying they, to talk myself out of it. When did they get the new lanes here? A couple two, years ago, actually. Years ago? Yeah, because they got them just before the PWBA came Correct. in. Correct. Actually, they got the new lanes here in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1979. They had the original, they called it Permalane. Permalane. Permalane, that's what it was called. Grant, you're going to have to fill me in on that, but I think that's what it was. <laughs> the first, The like first synthetic early, house in the... In the state, I believe. No way. Oh, Jones, that was uh, that's like your dad threw that ball. I mean, <laughs> I mean what? Yeah. I don't know if you heard that or not. Well, he'll listen to it he later. Didn't hear it. He didn't right. hear anything. <laughs> I said I thought I thought his dad Sorry. threw that spare oh, ball at him. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, okay. That would be just a non-focus. Mm-hmm. I would say because yeah. he didn't take. He's thinking about why I left that and what I'm going to do next time instead of just focusing on picking up the spare. Because you, you, you should never miss that. You think it's a routine yeah. spare? Correct. And it's kind of like, you, know, you just... You let up. You don't oh, take missed the right. extra couple... Missed right. You don't take the extra couple of seconds to just... And it could be still in his mind on that shot. Oh, yeah. So you lose a little bit of focus, you miss a single pin, and then you're not totally focused in the next frame. I mean, hey, I take the most time out of anybody. No, so, I, mean, I thought. Come, I mean, just wait take, a minute. Take a little extra time. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with taking a little. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time. You're telling us yeah, that you should, Chad, you, like, you should Chad, take a little extra time. We got Chad time. and then Clark. <laughs> Clark. I actually have a really funny story that Chad and I were talking about. Well, let's hear it. All right. So we were talking about, um, you know, there were pretty much six bowlers, five to six bowlers on a pair today. So when I crossed with Chad, I actually had to wait. So I walked up to Chad and I was like, excuse me, sir, I'm really not used to waiting <laughs> because everyone else is used to waiting. You know, everyone else is waiting on me. So, you know, he had a good time. And then, and then we started to think, like, who do we need to have, like, the slowest pair in history? And it was you, Clark, Clark. Uh, Chad. The Thompson twins. Oh, the Thompson twins. We would have to twins. split them up. <laughs> Here's and the then there was someone else to make the six. I can't remember who it was. Oh. If Chad's still hanging around here, he would know. Let me tell you about people who, and this is not any knock on anybody, but not, you get your own pace of what you do, whatever, and I really don't care how people are slow on the approach, you be up there ready to bowl, follow the guy up the approach. 
a slow bowler can dictate the pace of the whole 79 no bowlers. Oh, so yeah. we can only go as fast as the slowest bowler. So no matter how you want to go slow, take your own pace, everybody wants to do their own pace, but we can only go as fast. So the fast bowlers like Matt and I are, <laughs> we can't go our pace yep. unless we're on our pair and then we have to wait for the next one. But I'd still rather go faster on my game and wait for the next game than to slow down my pace for that game. I don't know how you guys do that. I just don't. I can't do that. Uh, I get the rhythm. I get a fast rhythm. Uh, yep. And Luffy right, and yep, I talk yep. about this all the time. You got a fast we rhythm. We have a fast rhythm. That's, we want to just keep exactly going. That's exactly what it is. And I, I have a much small, slower yeah. rhythm. Yeah. yeah, that's a good word, rhythm. Well. Hey, Sam Lanto is watching. The reason there's sound, Sam, is because I'm here talking. <laughs> Earlier I was bowling, so then there was no sound, right. except when Jason was <laughs> really giving scores. I was thinking, like, when I was is down he here, I'm like, I don't hear Corbin. Oh, he made the cut. <laughs> oh, you used to hurt me down like, there when oh. I missed that spare. Oh. <laughs> is Lanto uh, stateside yet, or is he yeah, still he just in Helsinki? Got, no, he just got back. <laughs> <laughs> he just got back uh, today, and now we're... In fact, I'm supposed to be calling him on our way home tonight because we're going to make a reservation for our uh, Costa Rica Costa trip. Costa Rica, yeah. So, yeah, I'll be, Sam, I'll be calling you on my way home. I got a 45-minute drive, so I'll, I'll discuss that with you on the way home. Tim Reset, John Cryer, is one of the slowest, yes, because... He waits for everybody else to be done, like in league for sure. He wants to have the ball in his hand. Talking about somebody who wants to know what he needs to have to win or whatever. He wants to be that guy. So that'll slow everybody down. So I'm guessing you'll have a little bit of rum in Costa Rica. Um, what's a little? <laughs> <laughs> how, that, how is it down there? Uh, That's pretty cool. Right? It's really cool. It's uh, we do. It's a senior tournament that we bowl, yeah. and it's uh, it's rainy season, so. We're never really right. outside because there's really nothing to do. So, we're, right, right. and the bowl, we only bowl three games a day. But <laughs> really, yeah, it stretches <laughs> out. Uh, <laughs> but you gotta like, get there, and then, I don't know. It's just you gotta be what fifty and older to get there. Uh, the yeah, senior? the senior part of it. Oh, there is a, there is another another tournament that for regular bowlers. Are you regular? A few under fifty, I guess. Uh, yeah. And I got we're the pros. More. We're the I pros bowling stuff. Years. And that's at a different bowling center. It was damn near outside. I mean, you, you go in the back and it's like wide open and the air just comes through and it's hotter than hell in there and the shot's not easy. We bowl at the newer place and the shot's pretty easy, obviously, for our seniors. And I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. You end up bowling as so we bowl three... Three in a different country. No, we bowl four games. Four games today. Sorry. It's four games. But you're in a different country oh, and you're we experiencing meet, different We meet bowlers from all over the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm Facebook what, friends with a lot of them, and we see them. What a cool experience. We go down there now, and they're all just giving us hugs and whatever. Hey, you know, it's just a cool thing. Yeah. And yeah. so Sam was the one who started us going there. So it's Sam Lanto, Gary Green, Todd Deloy, and myself. And we're just teetotalers, so, you know, we don't really. <laughs> you know. And we were sitting at the bar one time, and we're actually blowing, blowing pretty well. And one guy, he's from uh, Puerto Rico, Francisco is his name. And, and he goes, I don't care what you guys do on the lanes, you're winning this, which is talking about <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Alright, William Jones. He needs to start striking. Yeah. No now what do we got going no more, here? No more spares this game. Let's have a good shot. You got a 40 pin yeah, deficit. Pretty good. But pretty good. Yeah, yeah that was really good. 40 pin deficit good. in the sixth frame. And I can't see uh Matafi uh like Switch open, balls. open, open, open here, whatever. No. Maybe, I don't know, Corbett. I bowl with them on Tuesday nights. <laughs> we'll on a house shot? No. No. Oh. Challenge oh, patterns. Challenge, okay. Every, every quarter. Is Where's that at? Uh, Concord. In the summer? Or no, you're no, in the uh, fall. Fall. Okay. Um, he's a little more focused here. I mean, that's just. Uh, he's totally so. focused oh, yeah. here. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah. he hasn't had beer not, like not he has just on a little. Tuesday night. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a lot. All I can tell you, though, is Will Matafee has yes. never beaten me in a match. That's correct. Yes, yeah, and when he found out. Oh, then he breaks up the two eight ten on it. Ain't gonna so, lie, there were a when lot I finally of made Matt play to today. I, he comes up, he goes, "Hey, you made it." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "I want Corbett." He goes, "I go, why you want me? You're gonna lose." Crush you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, crush we got our score you. sheets, and we didn't have to cross, and we didn't have to bowl each other because yeah. of the twenty four people who made Matt play, you really only bowled five, and then depending on the, on the position round, you might have got an extra <laughs> different guy in there. But I bowled well in my second match. Uh, he didn't start and out I, so great. And I went, Bro I went Brooklyn on him, uh -oh. and I don't think he was too okay, happy. Okay, uh, 
you know, it's easy for us to stand back here and say, this guy just needs to fill frames and yeah. he's not going to lose. And then you're up there and you go, yeah, I'm up by like 40, so I don't need oh, yeah. to even think about it. And then he whiffs on a 10 pin. And, you know, I should go down there and slap him because <laughs> he deserves to be slapped on that because that was a non-focused... I'm glad you didn't walk down and slap me on my business. You want to know why? Because I didn't a, see him missing. That's another, that's another routine spur. Oh, it's kinda, so easy. Because you left the 10 pin and, and your the initial thought process is, okay, okay so why did I leave it? And because you're you're going through the shot, like where did it? Where did really? My I do? Process is I need to pick it up. Well, no, because it's it's one of those things. You shoot enough of them, you, you're like, all right, I know how to pick this up. Now let's figure out what's going on. And you're, you're and on this. That's it's, interesting, Patty. That's it's on interesting. this. It's your not that process. easy. You can't. You can't. You switch still from that. have you to have focus to on shot. that. So That's interesting. Okay. Matafee That's was going. Like I just want to pick it up. That's my right. focus. Is yeah, I don't really. Care well, that's why you're so happened. slow. <laughs> you're yeah. thinking way ahead. You're oh, just yeah. still thinking way back oh, here. That's yeah. why. I'm like, yep. okay, so he's gonna pick this one up. And it still doesn't work. But so now, you know, if you're William Jones, you're going. You know, hey, I got that strike and he missed this spare. He can leave another four or ten, and I'm just gonna strike oh, yeah, out here, and I can have two twenty six. Which would be enough to win if he was actually able to do that. Right. Let's have William throw a couple of good shots here. Let's Jones. Right? I said William. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, which or they're yeah, both William. Let's have him throw a couple of good Didn't shots we just discuss here. this? We can right. call everybody their last name. <laughs> William Jones. Let's have William Jones put a couple of good shots together. And Make it a game. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Sit. Oh, no. I'm right. Oh. You know, we're we're off to the side. we're on, we're Touch right behind side. lane five and six, and he's on lane eight, and we can look at hey, it looked really good, and all of a sudden like picks up at like forty five feet, yeah. and it just it's just tough. <laughs> yeah. Did Matt did the reoil like help you at all? I I prefer Tom, did it I, help you? no no. Um, I was really lined up at, in the end of qualifying. There was plenty of hold. I, I, I could I had out room and I had hold enough to have well, I had finished with two thirty two twenty. But once they re-oiled, the back, oh, got it. the back ends were so crisp, and they yeah. hooked earlier and, and later, and so it, it, it didn't help me at all. I almost I didn't finished mind. in the same place like where I should have been after the re-oil. Or, let, me, oh. let me say that differently. Like, I should have started on the re-oil where I finished. Okay, I, I agree with you on that. I should have, too. I didn't yeah. because I was thinking that it was going to be different. I actually right. thought maybe I, I ended might up. have a little more volume, maybe. I don't know why. I thought, funny, I was... So that makes me feel like the left side, same as the right side. Usually here, you know, lefties have the bands all the time. Oh. But, no, not yeah, all not all the time. Oh, there we go. Oh. oh. That's... But I, I didn't think I could play where I ended up, so I didn't start the way in the first match I bowled against Ben Godey. I was trying dollar ball, thinking, okay, there's going to be more oil, whatever. It wasn't that way. When I finally got in, where I, and I go, I probably play the same thing. Yeah, then they still hooked more. They still really? hooked more. Yeah. Oh, well, back, ends, back ends hooked more than yes. I ever thought they were there, going there, to. First, in, in qualifying, and then match play. Match play, I was, I, it was amazing how much more we had on the back end of the lane. Yeah. And I, I went, I started off a little bit too far left than uh, where I finished, and I went 150 the first game of match play, and I'm like, okay, well, let's just bump in, and, and you know, and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, the real did absolutely nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't help us. Well, and there were only... we, we still had to play where we were playing, except that they, that they got the end of the pattern and just took a left turn. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were, there couldn't have been 10 lefties out there today. Well, two made the cut. Two made, yeah. So, your good buddy Pat Humphrey would know that's the right ratio. <laughs> he would, he would say that. Oh, we used to discuss that all the time. Brooklyn, great. Two out of twenty-four. That's a good. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, the oh. amount of bowlers based got, on the no, ratio of who can make. Yep, yeah, I yeah. You. You'd always figure that out. And if there was, say, there was supposed to be so many lefties and four should have made it, but three did, well, you just won, you know. But when you have, like, so many and it only should be, like, three, but only eight lefties make it, well, then that's yeah. not fair. Correct. Same yeah. with not enough making it. We want to make it fair for everybody. So these kind of patterns, I don't know if it's more fair for lefties or tougher for lefties. I don't think they break down enough for your lefties. Of course not. No, they, so you they get, like, don't. a fresh shot almost every time unless you're following it. It's the law of large numbers. Yes, correct. So, so therefore, that's a disadvantage for you guys. 
If it doesn't start opened up for lefties, it's not going to open up as Correct. quick as it will for righties. Correct. Right. This never really opened up. No. Either way, so therefore. No, I was going to say, man, I mean, <laughs> it it never did if it starts dirty on the right, it's like, well, it, it might stay dirty, or you guys right. might actually open it up enough to maybe. I mean, you know, that's how house, you know, if this was a house pattern tournament, I mean, the left you guys side would, whack it. would be butter all yeah. day, and then the, eventually the right side would get really dirty and cliffy. They'd get super probably. cliffed. The big, we that's the biggest problem with house that, the MSC, which is a senior classic. 50 guy, 50 year old guys and over. They always they do a lot of house shots. House shots are really only made for three or four games. Yep. They're not made for eight. So they get super clipped. And then you gotta throw the ball like just this way. And you just gotta carry. You give me a carry fast. I never liked them. I hated them. I'd rather bowl on this than a house shot. Yeah. I don't care that I only average 180. So. Atta boy, Willem. I'm not sure if it's three or four or five and six. We need yeah, to, was, where's we need Jason? Uh, where's our tournament? Team? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did he leave? He might have left. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Because we need, they just need to know what pair they're bowling. Three right? and four. Is it three and four? Three and four. Three and four. Yes. Three oh. and four American, Will. Don't mind me. Yeah, don't don't even get into it. It's just American. Okay, you, yeah, you lost three times and won a double. So, we have another question. What was the ratio from one-handers to two-handers today? Oh my God! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, the there was no non-juniors two-handers. Well, right. <laughs> okay. None of us are going to do the two-handers, not whatever. So, if you were a two-hander, you were a junior. Yep. So, of those juniors, how many were two-handers? A lot. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Yes, how many plenty. juniors were not two-handers? That would be that would be easier to count. Okay. Uh, Ryan Spadursky, like, I bowl with him, whatever. I don't know if he's not even a junior anymore, I don't think. No, I think, okay. no, uh, no. I know he's he's a collegiate bowler, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, right, so. I don't know. Diane Margette, that's a tough question. Juniors that, or that's, how many yeah, two handers? That's crazy. But you're right, they were all juniors. There were no, <laughs> there were no <laughs> older uh, guys out there. Yeah. We're going to oh, turn our camera over here to three and four. And then we got Briley Howell. He's got one CBA title, I believe, not two, maybe two? One, at one, least I, one. Yeah, yeah, one for sure, and William Amatafee. What's that? He's that one year last year. Yeah, he won year last well, year. See, I thought that. That's well, that's not fair. You come back and bowl in the same house because you won it. Well, and you weren't in the bet you win, right? Is that? Oh, you were. Oh, and, that's, and... That's what it was. That's what it was. Anyway. Well, so the guy you won here, that's not fair. He shouldn't, <laughs> he shouldn't come back here and be able to bowl again. He's just a house bowler. Exactly. That's what I thought it was. I've had him. I just don't bowl at him. So, I Robert, him what's an older guy? He's got, he says 30, 40? No. Uh, okay, for, uh, for two-hander two to one-hander. It's probably 40. 40, 40, yeah. Probably, you know, but nobody in their 30s are two-handers. Not that I can. No. I don't think I've seen anybody... 30 and over shooting two hands. No. I, I don't think I so. I can't say I do. Anybody 25 and over shooting? <laughs> I, I, I like to know now what, is, I, what does I that mean? I think age? there's probably a 25 year old in, in well, the CBA mix, but then again, I see a bunch of the guys <laughs> pulling a day down there, so I don't, who knows? Oh. My, uh, That's just one big beer. We had a guy who brought us a pitcher of beer. What are you guys going to have? A pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first time I have not seen you. Good. All right, thanks, Jason, our beverage of choice, which is a pitcher of it. Of, uh, da no, that Bald Man Brewing. Bald Man Brewing. Uh, Hazy IPA. Yeah. We found these down there. Yeah, I need them. Are they yours? No, but I need them. Oh, you know them. Jack Matapi is watching. Jack, you said you were going to bowl. Oh, no, that was going to be the MSCs you're going to bowl. Yeah. That's right. You were going to bowl. You mean Will's dad. Will's dad. <laughs> oh, Andy oh, yeah. Gruber. Oh, yeah. Well, Jack, thanks for chiming in. Up how old is Andy? Well, he's not 35. I'll well, okay, <laughs> yeah. So he's the oldest two-hander. Thank you. We're I've trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, I need to. So maybe Jason Hansen knows the answer to this question. I'm sure I do. <laughs> I don't think you do. What do you mean? Two-handers. How many? Who is the oh. oldest two-handed bowler oh. that we have in the CBA competition? Ron Wilson. 
Ron Nelson. Nelson. Oh, oh, Ron Nielsen. I haven't seen him both. Yeah, Nielsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he can do both. Yep. And and that I would. Oh, I don't he's know, but he's got to be 58, 56. Somewhere there. Mid 50s to 60. 58, 56. Yeah. And you're right. He goes back. And forth. If not him, Is he like OG. Rick Hank, he's lefty. Oh, he, oh, he did the one-handed no thumber. Well, he's not okay. too handed. I put them in the same. <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, sorry. Because no. he doesn't okay. have to get down to the line. Uh, okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. So, <laughs> anyways, Andy Gruber. How old hey, is so. Andy Gruber? Oh, uh, he's fifty something. No, isn't no, he? no, no. He's not a senior. Is he? Okay. Uh, Andy, I'm. Vocal I'm vocal sorry. <laughs> Well, Andy's not the watching. Bowlers? Yeah, that bowl the CBA is two handers. Because we were talking about how the junior bowlers, like a majority of them were two handers. It's like 50 50. Like Sam, you went all the way to Finland and didn't give me a bottle of rum? Hey. No, no offense, Andy. Hey, really. I'm sorry. Jason Hansen, I got to Sam yeah. Landfill goes all the way to Helsinki, Finland, and doesn't yeah. bring me back a bottle of rum. Sam, you're fired. Wait, they have rum in Finland? Well, he was drinking it. It looked like a great trip, though. And he goes, hey, do you have this bottle? I go, no. You want one? I go, yes. And then he doesn't bring a bottle. (laughs) Sam, you're fired. That's absolutely rude. That's what I thought. That's rude. You want this? Well, I didn't bring it back, but do you want it? (laughs) Terry, yeah, Gold Riley, yep. So, uh, he's uh, he's obviously the leader, and he he has probably the, one of the the best shots out there. That I'm sure he's pretty comfortable. He's won before, so it's going to be a really good match. Two young guys that uh, both want to win. Yeah. It'll be but fun. Will is throwing a camo hustle. Hustle Well, however you want to phrase it. Camo hustle. I don't Did care you how you a, phrase it. <laughs> Did you say a camo or a camo? Camo. 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 Like the animal of the camo? No. Camo. C-A-M-O. Like camo. Yeah. The camouflage. Camouflage. Oh, hold on. Like camo if you guys are going to have all that chatter, back up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. We were interrupting your non. Jack, Jack Matafee <laughs> says hi, Tom and Mr. President. <laughs> so Matt, El Presidente, to you. All right, there we are. Uh, okay, so uh, just how we discussed before. Would you rather have the ball in your hand, you know, to start have the other guy start if you don't have any preference of what lane is better? Uh, usually, the left lane is uh usually hooks more so you get more room to get in deeper so if you're right-hander you want to finish on that lane if yep. they're bad that way but riley might just uh, want to get done with the match and put the pressure on will riley is taking hand out of going up the lane which is he, actually kind of surprising it is surprising so when because he and i live down on the the high end of the house for match oh play. nice shot he, william good start he came up the back end of the ball and had a lot of a lot of speed and it looked really good but, and I don't know if that's what he's going with here, but that's what he did throughout match play. I can't imagine he didn't. He know, doesn't look to be too day, deep with know, his feet. A little more aggressive, right? This, this yeah, game. but when you take your hand on him, you just kind of tumble it. You want something that the ball to, to do the work, really. Yeah. Well, when yeah. you're young, you can do that. He, he's further right than I thought he'd be. See, oh. oh, boy. Oh, I don't think like it, but that's funny. Yeah, you can that looked really like good. That. He made it look like a house shot. That's it. That's what he was doing down here, and he's he's got his hand out of it because I, I don't know if anybody's ever watched him throw a ball. He gets around the ball quite quite a bit. Is that, that a master was, zen? Yes. Oh wow! You know so, what I'm amazed with? And this is kind of I'm funny thing. He like acted like it was a bad shot. Yeah, well, there's that he too. Did, because we thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. But I'm kind of amazed, and I watch him do this a lot. He just picks the ball up. With one finger and throws it into his left hand. <laughs> I did it once and then I'll never do it again. Well, but yeah, that, he does that all the time. Oh boy, peel. Okay, so and that's the one downfall is if you miss right with out there with that, it's it never reads. It never well, he's picks not up. coming around the side of it. Now he does have a torn finger. I think it's a ring finger. Is that why he's going this route? That's possible because he showed me that. And I, I go, well, that's what you get for hitting the ball. I, go, I have no problem with my fingers. <laughs> I pulled with Dave Ullman today, who certainly made the cut, and he was doing the same thing that Bradley was doing, just kind of going right up the back of the ball with a raw hammer. Try not Good to spare. Do too much to it, and it looked really good. I actually tried well in two games in a mat play. I took out, I had a IQ Tour Nano Pearl. 
Okay. And I thought I was going to try to like, throw it really straight and hard. Up, I don't know, somewhere like 12 or something like that, whatever. Take it out and I leave a light seven and I strike. Oh, that's worked pretty good. Well, that's the last time I ever really pulled to the pocket. Because <laughs> uh, I was just trying to like take everything out of it and, and throw it straight, but it either would hook or wouldn't hook. Whether it was in the wrong part of the lane, I'm not sure, but it, was, it, it wasn't the right ball. Sam, I don't thumb loft as much as I used to. If I thumb lofted it today, it hooked left right away. <laughs> Sam, I liked it better when you were in Helsinki. Oh, <laughs> I know, Sam. We're in for the CBA doubles, right? Throwing elbows here. But I still can thumb loft if I need to. Ah, it's fun. It's always it is fun. So we'll, we'll miss that one just a hair, right? And, and you leave 2-8. Oh, oh, I was actually wondering if he was going to hook at it or throw a spare ball at it. And I left three 2-8s today. I missed two of them, and I used my spare ball, and I picked it up. <laughs> I tried to hook at it, you know, figuring that it would just be a little bit light. No, I picked up the 8-pin just like he did both times. And the next time I just threw straight at it with a spare ball. But I thought I would chop it with the spare ball, so I was thinking myself. Yeah. Well, Ch Chad makes fun of me on the two eights because I throw spare. I throw my spare ball at the you two do. eights all the time. All the time. He calls me Bob Hager because Hager throws <laughs> spare ball. And he and he asked me why I did it. I said, well, if I throw my spare ball at it, I know I'm getting one. If I hook at it, I don't know if I'm getting one. They call so, you Bob Hager because he wants you to quit, like Bob <laughs> yeah, did. Maybe, I, don't. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta think a, a decent question. Oh, so good shot, good Will. Very good shot. So with a pattern like this today. When you guys like threw a bad shot, did you feel like, oh, that's such a bad shot? No. No. I felt like not really. the pattern is so tough where it's like, you know what? As long as I left something bankable, correct. Let's move on. Um, it's very easy to throw bad shots on a tough pattern. And so, it's also like there were times where it's like, well, I thought it was good. Maybe oh. I should move. I don't know because it was so tough. Like I thought I threw a decent shot, then, and that's where the somewhat of a conundrum comes in there, Corbett. Go ahead. Oh, what I was gonna say, oh, throwing a bad yeah, shot, like adjust, adjusting off a bad shot is a bad thing to do. And then when you bowl on something so tough, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> was it a bad shot? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I think so. It takes you four frames to figure that out, and then yeah. that way you got 160. So I was right. bowling. I was bowling Omen in match play, yeah. and I I started the match. So I was on, I started every one of my matches in match play. So I I, well, I on the left one. I know. I was I'm I was gifted that. Oh no. <laughs> I kidding. didn't. Go I was ahead. on the right lane every day. But anyway, play. I throw so my so first shot of the match. I go Brooklyn carry the strike, and I go wow, that probably was me. So he gets up, does his two shots. I go to the right lane and leave a dead that ten. Was that was very, very that was good. Yeah, I was like, oh. and then so then I go, to, I go back on the lane I went Brooklyn on. I didn't change anything because I thought I made it. I go Brooklyn again for another strike, and I, I came back and I told Omen, I go, like, well, apparently it wasn't me because I just did the same right. thing twice. <laughs> when you're on something this tough, especially being right-handed. I mean, you guys got all sorts of what in stuff to deal with. Guys throwing urethane, guys throwing match play. Match play is a completely different beast in the fact that Cheryl, qualifying. Chad lost to uh, qualifying. Less, there's a lot less ton. bowlers. Uh, there's a lot of less in the match play. He's out now. He ended up third. Urethane being thrown out too. A lot less traffic. Because the day that the way the day started, there was a ton of urethane thrown right away, and and. It always amazes me. Every CBA, and I'm not I'm not picking on the young kids, but the young kids tend to like to go to urethane Absolutely. right away. And I get kids, it because it kids, it yep. kills the back end of the lane, so you don't have to worry about it overreacting back there. But it's not it's not the ball, and and that it changes so much. It change, takes oil up front a lot quicker. And it and then it just pushes it all down. Oh, chopping and it's off a, the one two off the it's four. It's brutal. It gets brutal. And I think that was another one of those shots where he didn't take enough time to. Uh, no, I don't know about that. I think it's just uh, it's just really tough. So he's got those two open in that right lane. He doesn't like. So now he's in a big conundrum right here. He's not sure what to do. Righty, a righty leaves the one two four, and you don't want to throw your hook ball at it because you just. With the head pin, yeah. and he threw plastic at it, and you're and now you're in the you're in the middle of like okay, well is this hook gonna hook? Is it not gonna hook? Should well, I throw it right there? Should I... Here's another thing too, like you know, 
but do you, if you, whenever you leave that, do you always throw your plastic? I do. Every single or time I throw plastic. Or maybe should you be like, well, maybe I should throw plastic at it this time, just because the pattern is so tough. There's so well, many decisions that you have to make. Oh, yeah. And now, I have, if it's early in the day, if I whip the head pin like that and I leave a one, two, four, I will throw another strike shot at it just to be like, all right, did I do something wrong here or am I mis and it's early so I can I can absorb that bad if I do chop it or I don't get there or whatever I can there's I can make it up now, oh, late in the will, day will, will. Oh, okay. late in the day I, I'm gonna go after a spare so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go plastic at it and then come back and stew on it but yeah. all right so all right, here we go bro. we have uh, we will Matafee is actually lost He's struggling. He had those two open in the right lane. He left the two pin. I'm not sure how good a shot that was. Briley looked pretty locked in. So he, that seven count was just a bad shot. And he went two solid strikes. If this is the strike right here, he's going to be home free. And there you go. He's not home free anymore. Because uh, well, if he was Doug Manhart, he would have carried that. <laughs> it, just tells, it just tells you that he must have thrown those other ones really, really good to get the ball to set up into the pocket. And if you set down a little shorter, you miss in by a little bit, it's going to hook early and then cross over. Doesn't mean that he couldn't have carried that strike in a crossover or whatever. Is he trying to throw it harder? Oh, yeah, I think absolutely. Just harder and just straighter. Straighter and uh, not hitting it. Yep. He's not going to come around the side of the ball to have it go left off the pattern. I mean, I know he's just trying to go up the back of the ball. I just wasn't sure if he's actually trying to throw it well, harder. Well, because if he's if he goes his normal speed and does that, speed. what he's doing, it's going to read early and it's going to go left. So to keep it on target, he has to he has to speed up. Especially with that surface. Correct. A lot of surface. Yep. Masters. One then. finger again. I know. That's amazing. I watch it all the time. <laughs> I can't do I I do that with my left hand. I actually pick my ball up with the fingers and I throw it into my right hand. It's because we're not 28. Yeah, exactly. But I can't pick it up with my. Why would I pick my right hand to throw it into my left? I don't know. He's pretty good. At it. It's funny that he does that. It's pretty good. I thought it was better than that. It looked better than that. But that just tells you there's not that much room out there. So those two strikes right. through. Here's another thing. You threw those first four frames, one bad shot, the other three really good. Now, where he's playing, did he dry them out just in that spot? Uh, or did Will help dry it out, whatever That's he's doing? Question. So do you, should he be moving, so anticipating here, ahead of time? So here's what's going on in his head. If he thinks he threw it well, maybe he'll move. Uh, I think he's going to move just because he's he's smart enough bowler. Yeah. He's been around in the country wide, whatever, and so he's going to say this is not. I got to move my feet, target something. So or here's, so here's the question though: on a pattern like this, do you move left or do you move right? I mean, well, he true. went high, so in theory, maybe should you move further away from the head? No. No. So you should move you, in If any move, you're moving left. You're moving left because there's nothing outside, and if you get out further, it's going to skid down and you get three off the right. Well, I'm left-handed, so I'm thinking like a lefty. Well, and then Will, all of a sudden, now is going, hey, the little chink in the armor for my opponent. So he's got, so he can double right here. All of a sudden, he's within, it's a 10-pin match. We were given the title to Riley already, but now it's not. See another good shot by Will right here and close up a little bit. By the way, we've been here for like the time we get here, nine o'clock this morning, eleven hours. Eleven hours. Actually, I got here about eight fifteen, so I've been here for twelve hours. No, the day wasn't very nice. Now it's dark. It was raining. <laughs> it, was it was hot. It was humid. Bowling. Yeah, it was. It was a great day to bowl. You don't want to be outside. Today. Okay, Will, right here. Put some pressure on Let's your opponent. Oh, oh, he's half, half running it out. Ladies he wasn't and, really. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's see what Bradley does see here right what now. The response is. What do you do on this? Uh, what do you leave? Would Bradley leave the last frame on this lane? They're both used to this. Oh, but, he went Brooklyn left out. But let's just see. Six? Oh, yeah, right, okay. He's still staying out. He's going to move his feet in a board or two left. And what he wants to do, I think, is project the ball think, down the lane I further. Think he's gonna, I think he's going to answer. I think he'll ace it. I think he'll just crush it. Oh, boy. Oh. 
Oh! oh. 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 Almost a trip to. We've seen a lot of slow racks today, Patty Main. I you had, had. You had like the slowest rack in the history so of America. I left a four pin <laughs> and I had a pin that was rolling around. And I, I was joking, like roll, roll, roll over. And it slowly and it rolled did. over, hit it, and actually knocked the four pin over. I was more surprised at the fact that it that fell over. Like, I figured it just kind of. Uh, that was like five Mississippis. Over. Oh, yeah. It was forever. Five Mississippi. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know why I was, I was just saying that to see. <laughs> roll. Oh, he I had it all the way. Quick. All right, so here, here's what we got. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like one 116 in the six with a spear up for Briley. Uh, and Will. Will can have, uh, if he strikes out, he's going to take, he's going to be an even match. No matter what he does here, if Will strikes, we have an even match in the seventh, eighth frame. Coming down to a title. That's what it should be. Yep. Or no, Will's yeah, got like Will's three. got three. Will's got three, Bradley, and Bradley, Bradley, he won here last year. No, Weren't no. you paying attention? We talked that a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't think I was here. We just discussed it. Oh, okay. Well, I was not obviously paying attention. No, you weren't. All right, come on, ace this one. Three. That is so it's easy to do. So, so okay, that one looked like, and, and I've seen Matt McNeil of all a lot of people who get up on your toes when you want to like really throw it hard and I did it a couple times a day and all you do is hit it early yep but Matt yep. was better at that he would get up on his toes and he would get it down the lane but he got up on his toes to throw it harder and it hook earlier because he didn't stay down and throw it through. you try to throw it harder but yet it's backwards all right well will will's going I got him I got this now whatever it was uh, confidence should be I think high. Will is like this is a this is a big shot. Right this here. gets him. This gets the match even right here if he strikes. It looks like he did. He has feet up there, moved to another board, board and a half left with his feet, maybe. Projected down the lane too far. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. And that, it. He thinks God, he threw that, that easy. He thinks he threw that really That's bad, but it wasn't really bad. No. <laughs> it just. That, that happens so easily. He's going, okay, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go high. Everybody that bowled today realizes how easy that oh was God. to do today. Just. All I know Sell is, it a little right and it just... I bowled all day today and I got 13,000 steps. That's, that's all? A, well, that's a lot of two <laughs> shots per frame. Oh, yeah. And I sat yeah. down between everyone. Uh oh Oh! oh there we go, the sir, boy. 12-pin match going into the ninth frame. The all-important ninth frame. Will's going, I need to strike no matter what to give myself an opportunity to win this game. I got to strike in the ninth frame. Well, that looks like... I mean, uh, this has changed. Seven. See, I sat down with you. You got 15,000 yeah, steps. Right now, I think Patty Mang, like, it's anybody's game. It is. No, they do. Because Riley doesn't have a very good look right now. Okay, so. And it can only be, you know, what, what's you can Will only blame do? it on bad shot making for. What's Will going to do here? He, he left. Uh, well, he's made another move. He's been counting boards up there. I mean, he's going to throw a good shot. He may. Great that shot. was like south. That, uh, that was so money. he can get 202. Bradley if Bradley just him Bradley can set him out, but if he just goes, you know, spare strike, you dutch out of he's got well, he's got 194. Sure. 194 could be enough to win this game. Bradley hasn't thrown the last couple of shots So let's see if he if he'll settle down a little bit. I'm thinking he's gotta move his feet in. I'm not sure if he's doing it or not. That wasn't good at all. <laughs> right, everybody raise their hands. <laughs> I got I got mine right. up. All right. Oh. So he can uh, doesn't matter. Pick this up, strike, strike out, and you shut him out. <laughs> He's not looking oh back here. God. Would you look back here if you had forty like, people oh. raising their hands? Would you need this spare <laughs> like, in the ninth well, frame to have a chance for a CBA title? <laughs> no. 
You're focusing down there. Is he using a spare ball at this? Yeah, he is. Why does he use a spare ball for a strike shot? Well, it's urethane he's throwing. So oh. Great question. Maybe he does it. Well, he throws it from the left side. Okay. Through kind of back up. All right. So he, the right. what he needs to do is at least get nine. If he doesn't strike, he's got to he's got to get that. 193 somehow, or 192. He goes strike sure. or ninth pitch or whatever to oh, yeah, force his opponent to double. He doesn't need to double because I don't think, well, I, I want to say that Will can't double. It's not easy to double. No. Okay, so what he doesn't want to do is leave something that he can't pick up. Right. So let's throw it straight and hard. Oh, he's, he's winding up. I think he's trying to loosen the swing up a little. That looks pretty good from here. Much better. Very good. Much better. And he knows it. So, what he needs to do for sure is spare to force Will to get a double. But if he gets this one, then he wants to strike to shut him 